<laughs> okay, well, let's, uh... No, no, we... We've we've arrived at the studio with an inner ear infection. We cannot we there's not gonna be any judo for us today. <laughs> from Austin, Texas, where we're launching our horses directly into the nearest Pony Canyon. It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Danny. Is that why there's this huge collection of horses right in the middle of downtown? Yeah, it's a, a proud Texas tradition. Started okay. back in the uh, the ancient days. Back when people were bored, they were waiting for video games to invent. <laughs> They would just ride their horses directly up to the nearest gorge and then bail out Grand Theft Auto style. <laughs> would they do a cool horse slide as the horse flew? Exactly. Oh man, horse slide. Gotta love that technique. You had to do something to entertain yourself back in the days. And uh, we continue that tradition today on Retro Pals. Yes. Hi everybody. We're going to cover the history of Pony Canyons all around the world. Mostly the one located in Japan. The one that's a uh, game publisher. That's the one most relevant to us, I think. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. This is uh, this is gonna be a weird one. <laughs> this, this like has extra weird games in it. Usually, like the games are mixed that we cover in a publisher catalog. It's like, okay, I can see how this would sell. This seems normal. And then occasionally, like this seems really fucked up. Why'd you do this? But Pony Canyon, it's really hard to tell what they were thinking. And uh, I'm looking forward to this one because of that. Same, same. Alex, why don't you thank the folks? Thank you so very much to Bill Bull for the five month resub. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Congratulations on your win on uh, Young Indiana Jones today. Oh, God, I saw some of that. That was, oh. a, that was a hell of a game. Amazing. Thank you, Kabi Torori, for the 40 month resub. Thank you, Kirby. The big Rocking 40. on these guy motes. Thank you. Big 4 0. Oh. Thank you, Polo Cat Fan, 34 month resub. The new emotes are sick. Also, is Pony Canyon on Pony Island? Yes. <laughs> it's true. It's part of the extended pony universe. Thank you. Thank you, Shine and Era, for the 38 month resub. That's over three years. Thank you so much. Yeah, the math checks out. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Krungo, for the 100 bits towards the creation of an Andy emote. No! <laughs> I don't know. We do have a free emote slot. Uh, a lot yeah. of people love handicap nowadays, especially nowadays. <laughs> thank you, Sepasai19, for the 50 bits. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, and welcome. And thank you, Seraphis Game, for the 100 bits, hanging out, watching the pals play some Pony Canyon Kasoge on my 40th birthday. Happy birthday! Seraphis Kane, happy birthday! Everybody wish Her Seraphis Kane a happy birthday. Wish, the, wish, wish him a happy birthday or else. I'll make this stream extra weird for you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no. <laughs> so much as well to snubble bear for the 75 month resub do appreciate that that's a lot of months that thank you a snubble. lot of months that is so many months and thank you last but not least re for 40 month resub thank you so very much for that for that beautiful resub and thank you to everybody <laughs> for subbing thank you all for your beautiful resubs beautiful. and your bits they're all glimmering in front of us like uh jewels i will hoard them <laughs> i wish they gave out physical bits you know that would make this whole thing way more of a it, they they could gamify it, you know, just mail you gems every so often. I'm part dragon. This is maybe. I, I was gonna say this is me coded. I I would eat them though. I'm sorry. The bits look tasty. I would too. Oh good. Okay, we're on the same we're on the same page here. Thank you, Tough Goes Thirty four month resub. Welcome. Hey pal. Welcome. Hey. All oh, right. Boy. We have a big announcement here at the top of the stream. Oh yeah. For once, I decided, you know what? We got some emote slots. Maybe we should add some emotes that people might actually want to use in other channels and not just CDIN jokes. We're keeping those, though. We're keeping those for sure. Mm -hmm. However, let me introduce a selection of brand new emotes available to RetroPal subscribers, courtesy of artist Snout Sprout. Thank you so much, Charlie. Let me give you a shout out here. Yeah, do a shout out. All right, do it. Bring it up. Bring in the playlist. We're doing this right. Introducing the brand new Retro Pals emotes. Bring them in, boys. Woo! First one! Heart! 
you can uh, display this whenever you're happy with what's going on instead of us torturing you with weird bad games in the mm -hmm. rare times where you're feeling good about what's going on you can express it with gall heart next we got gall laugh i was laughing you can do this whenever i say something funny uh so pretty much spam it all the time don't mm -hmm. worry about it it's probably applicable to whatever i say you can also use it for alex too i guess <laughs> emote number three Ooh. He's at the rave. He's moving and grooving. He's at the he's he's happy at the about cornfield. he's happy about what he sees at the at the cornfield rave, and he's <laughs> cheering us on. Oh, I love you, Ga. Next. Oh, this is when he's a little upset. He's a little uh, sad or angry about what's going on in the video game. This is not a sad or angry stream, so you'll never have to use this. Hopefully, no. This is the scene. He'll you'll never see him. Well, folks, the jester part of the government has won. They've uh, enforced their jester policy on us. <laughs> Apparently, if jester content meets a certain threshold in percentage of uh, your stream content, you have to add a jester emote. I was against this, but this is it's it's in there now. Legally required, your your <laughs> jester emote. Thank you, Alex, for ensuring that that was possible. Fiddly D, look, everyone, it's me. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad I did that. Already regretting it. Next up, we have... Oh! He's doing the... Okay, that's... I didn't see the juxtaposition before. That's <laughs> Look, they're pointing at each other! He's doing the uh, the point uh, meme. Apparently that's a meme people use on the internet. I don't know. I just, I, I just thought he looks cute pointing at a thing. He does! He's pointing out cool stuff. Whenever you see something recognizable, like when the CDI fucks up, you can be like, Ooh! Ooh! Yeah! Yeah! There! That's the Retro Pals moment. It's happening. Whenever whenever we talk about the Big Bopper, just bring him up. <laughs> oh, baby, that's what I like. Next. <gasps> Fuck. For when things go a little bit wrong, when maybe you're raving, but you should be uh, a little bit concerned, there is Gaw Glitch. That's when uh, that's when things take a turn here on Retro Pals. We have several emotes that uh, express that feeling. We got the freaking Peter Sellers, we got Bouncers, and now we have a glitched gaw. So whenever something fucks up on this stream, which almost never happens, never, we never fuck up. You on can motto. you can commemorate it with this emote. Finally, we got a couple of uh, bonus ones. How about this one? Yeah, he's walking. I made yes, that indeed. one myself. He's walking. Uh, he's going somewhere. Danny, when, tell the people how many hours this took. Oh, I don't want to admit. It took me many hours. It turns out I tried to make this from a sprite sheet, but the freaking sprite sheet maker missed two of the animation frames, so it came out all blomby looking. So I figure, all right, I'll start up Popful Mail, play the game until we get to Gaw, or get a save file off the internet. Nope, no save files on the internet. I have to play this game for three hours before I unlock this little fucker. So I do that. I ram him against a wall for a while in order to grab the animation frames, and now you see the beautiful result in front of you. You can do this when you're invading other channels. You can summon your own Gaw army. Uh, everybody likes Gaw. We do. He's, he is he is creature shaped, and God, we love creatures. And finally, one last one. Yeah! From Charlie, we got jams. This is for when uh, Gaw hears something that he likes. I like this one. He looks all bouncy. He looks very happy. He looks very pleased in this He's one. He's good. <laughs> I love him. All right, there you go. That gives you yet more value for your RetroPal subscription. You can now use these emotes across all channels on Twitch if you're subscribed to us. Also, as a thank you to our longtime followers, I have made the previous Gaw Sprite emotes follower emotes. Yes! So if you're watching this channel and following but not subscribed, you can use any of those whenever you want. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. All right, enough of that shit. Let's play some video games. Okay, here we go. Pony Canyon. How does one get a name like Pony Canyon, anyway? Well, the company Pony Inc. merged with Canyon Records. Thank you for watching Retro Pals. This has been a... Another exhaustive deep dive into gaming history. Uh, appreciate the support. See ya. That's it. All right. I guess there they were no ponies being. No, this was pony? Like, like, none of the... like the best Japanese gaming publishers in the world. This one started up as a record company, <laughs> Pony Inc. They merged with another record company to become Pony Canyon, releasing several games for MSX, PC88, and NES. There's a whole lot of these. There's over a hundred. I had to sort through these and pare it down a little bit to form a cohesive story, and uh, I still didn't end up successful. But what I got is what you're going to see right now, so let's start it up. Okay. We're going to play a selection of MSX and NES games released by Pony Canyon as a way of comparing and, and contrasting the uh, 
computer side of the industry way back in the 80s versus the home console market, which was just emerging back then. Real quick, uh, you want to show the poll results? Yeah, why not? Here they are. <laughs> This was your choice. Your choice is two very similar companies with very similar reputations. Pack and Video versus Pony Canyon. It was neck and neck, but eventually Pony Canyon won out. Thank you, Alex, for reminding me about the poll. And thank <laughs> no, you. No worries. I'm. And thank you to our patrons. Thank you to our patrons for making this week's stream possible. Yes, thank you. This clusterfuck. It's on you. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, we're starting off on MSX with a selection of MSX1 games that they released, as opposed to MSX2. Uh, let's start off with a rare cassette-based MSX game. It's this one. Jackie Chan in Spartan X. Okay, Spartan X! Now you see this in the ROM list and you think, okay, they ported over the IRIM arcade game, the one that was on NES, the one that was called Kung Fu or Kung Fu Master, depending on which version you played. Japanese Famicom one was called Spartan X. It's based on a Jackie Chan movie. And this, here on MSX, not only is this one of the rare cassette-based games as opposed to disc or ROM cartridge, but it's a unique game. They didn't port the iRim game, and it has an amazing intro. Look at this intro. <laughs> okay, so before the show happened... Just, just stabbed her like luggage. Yeah, like, like I said, he picked her up like a duffel bag. Before the show, I watched the intro and I laughed so hard that everyone in the house came in and had to see what I was looking at. Now that's how you pick up women. Okay, let's play Danny! Sorry. No, that's good. Sorry. You have to push the space key or something? That's yeah, normal. here we go. I have to have a keyboard and a controller hooked up for this. Um, Joystick, please. <laughs> go ahead and ban me. You ain't gonna stop me. I'm unstoppable. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I thank Tough Ghost for the 34 month resub. Thank you so much. Oh, you for did. That. But you get okay. the double thank you. Okay, double thank you. And then I know I didn't thank Smooth W1 for the 32 month resub. Big fan of ponies and canyons. Me too. Me too. Thank you. Wait, this is Pony Spartan Cup. X? Yeah, this is Spartan X. Danny, this is nothing like Spartan X. Yeah, you would just assume, looking through a ROM list, given that this game got so many ports, or rather that other IRIM developed game, but this is a Pony Canyon original. They don't need iRim. They can make their own Spartan X game. Okay, well, thank you, Magmaram. 69 month resub. Finally, the weed number. Yes, and the Pony Canyon numbers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Here you see their famous logo up there, Ponyka. That's their, uh, it's that, that's their alias in Japan. That looks like what the, 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 the Ponyka logo kind of reminds me of the really bad Patreon logo now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got that, that really bad aesthetic. Good job, Pony Canyon. <laughs> Taking inspiration from the best. So luckily, this is a multimodal sort of game. This isn't the entire game. For some reason, Jackie Chan has to run 10 kilometers before he can start the game. I don't know what's the, the deal with that. I've also never seen the movie, which was released in English as um, Meals, Wheels on Meals. Yeah. Not the other way around. Good job, Jackie Chan. You reached the castle? I gotta watch Complete. this movie. Complete. Complete. Now, Alex, I want you to memorize this screen. Up, up and right, left, right, down and left, down, down and right, space. Oh my god, that's a lot. You got all that? Yeah. Okay, here's level two. I've never beaten level two. Let's see if we can do it. We have three Chans. In, in the first level, we had three Jackies. Here they call us Chan. <laughs> now, this is entirely controlled with the, uh, the D-pad. You push down and right in order to kick... And you just keep walking forward and kicking. And if he gets hurt, it's his fault. This is so strange. I, I appreciate it. Pony Canyon, you'll find out, they did things their own way. They knew that there was another Spartan X game out there, for sure. And they were like, no, we can do one better. This is a game for the Jackie Chan fans. You can see uh, his likeness represented in crystal clarity. <laughs> I like this because they can't attack when you're within a certain range, so if you want to get your energy back, you just, like, get right on top of them and hug it out. But what I don't like is your attacks also drain your energy, more so than if you actually got punched in the face, which makes this game kind of tough to play. Also, I've knocked this guy down a lot, but he keeps getting back up. I'm no good at MSX Spartan X. Maybe you need a punch? Oh god, we gotta... we gotta hug this out. You're 
back and bro into a corner. God damn it. <laughs> I really love the way you just lay down for a second. You're like, nah, hold <laughs> Hang on. on, I gotta get my... Gotta regain my strength here. Alright, speaking of strength, I gotta let the cat out. One second. Alright, Tess, let's go. Alex's strength training. Mm -hmm. Letting the cat out. Alright, Tess, get out. He keeps, like, blocking or absorbing damage, and you can't really tell how much health he has because he has no health meter. Shit. Oh, chat, important Tess news. Tess had a piece of cheese for the first time today. Yeah, she went ape shit. Yeah, I uh, had a little shredded cheese on my potato, and I gave her a tiny... <clears throat> I gave her a tiny shred, and she just, uh... ate it and then licked her lips for, like... Three minutes and then just sat there. <laughs> Double KO. Oh, that was good. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna win Spartan X for MSX. Uh, points for trying, Pony Canyon. As far as I can tell, you. <laughs> I like to jump. As far as I can tell, you cannot climb the stairs either. You have to actually beat this guy. So if anyone wants to. <laughs> We're just all tuckered out. We're having a nap here on the floor of the Castle of Death. <laughs> good night. Spartan X for MSX, a sign of things to come from Pony Canyon. Luckily, most of their games are ROM-based, so I don't have to go through the rigmarole of setting up a cassette. Uh, the emulator for the FPGA Mister loads cassettes in real time, so I had to set this up in advance. It took five minutes to load. But let's play some ROM-based games. Okay. Because Pony Canyon is pretty prolific here on the old MSX. Let's play Alpha Roid. You can get an ointment for that. <laughs> now, they had their own original games. They had games based on licensed properties. And most of the time, what they did here on MSX was port games made by other developers, most notably Activision was one of their biggest partners. This one, I don't know who this is, but uh, they made a game about an alpha roid. There he goes. This is the kind of game you would see on MSX in 83 or 84 or whatever. Oh, a rare attempt at parallax scrolling here on MSX. Look at this. You can see why it's rare. One thing they did, aside from porting over successful games from English language territories, is they would take Games made by essentially indie developers at the time, or people with very small software companies. So they weren't just about making money through licenses or whatever. They also were looking for the next big hit from the indie talent of the era. That seems okay. Your guy's really big, though. I don't know why he's doing that weird little dance out here in space. It's like his legs are all dangly. He's wiggling. So pretty good. Wiggle robot in space. I've played worse. I've seen worse wiggling. We really have on this uh, system, on this stream, and on the MSX YouTube. So speaking of licensed works, the next game we're going to show off is Back to the Future. Okay, this I'm excited about. I want to see how they did this. This isn't the NES game. This isn't any other game you may be familiar with, unless you're familiar with this version. But Pony Canyon <laughs> went on and made their own Back to the Future game for MSX. What do you think? I love that sprite! That's Marty McFly! Okay, I got George McFly from his house, and we have to get him to, uh... What's her face? Lorraine? There she is. Get her, George. Be my parents. That's pretty weird, actually. That's really weird. <laughs> Where are we taking him? Oh, to the dance hall, I guess. Oh, here we go. Go, go, go! Do it! Do it! Completed! Yeah, this is kind of like pac land. We've preserved our future. But it was not to last. Because there's always another dance for them to go to. Wait, is this it forever? Oh, they were in the same house! Wait a minute! <laughs> it sounds like the problem has solved itself. <laughs> if they're in the same house. <laughs> now they're just asking us to chaperone them to the freaking dance! There's birds! 
Remember when the bird dive bombed Marty McFly and he got fucking dead? And there was literally a cop on every street corner. Sometimes like 12, 15, 18? Some of them jump? What do the red ones do? This is the circus charm. There's so to many me. cops! <laughs> These must be the time cops. Huh? You're right there! Yeah, alright! <laughs> this is a pretty weird adaptation of Back to the Future, but I gotta say, in terms of gameplay, I prefer it over the NES version. This is more traditional, what you might expect. You don't have to run down the road uh, being assaulted by bees. I like, I like, uh, I like that your eyes turn to X's when you die. That's pretty good, I hadn't noticed that. Yeah. What, there's a subway? Oh, oh, you avoided the bird, good. Alright, we found Mom. See and the cops eyes. killed See me. See their X's. That's good. My score is high score! My score isn't. That's how Pony Canyon adapted Back to the Future to an 8-bit computer platform. <laughs> That's not remotely the weirdest thing we're gonna see tonight. Uh-oh. I pushed the wrong button. Uh, uh, we just do this and what then we... What do? It's okay, don't okay. worry about it. Okay, I won't. <laughs> this is normal. I'm American, I haven't used an MSX much, and this emulator is kind of funky. CISO! CISO? Some of these games got a simultaneous release on the SG-1000, that being the Master System predecessor from Sega. I think this might be one of them. Generally, I try to avoid these because we've covered those before. But this one's neat for a couple reasons. First of all, the gameplay is kind of uh, novel, I guess. It involves these seesaws and jumping around on platforms and stuff. Oh, okay. Second of all, if you notice the title screen, it's by Compile, who was one of the, uh, people would say, top-tier developers for MSX. Way back then, they were kind of pretty much an indie developer. And if it wasn't- I EXPLODED! And if it wasn't for Pony Canyon supplying the money, they wouldn't have released these games. So thank you, Pony. I got a flower, it made me red. I do like the balloon guys. I gotta admit, I didn't play enough of these games to make sense of all of them. A lot of these are very mysterious to me. Do you think- vaporize. Are these the, uh, landers that you see in Xanak and so on? Those little guy, uh, those little face guys. Mm, maybe. Maybe I have to get all the flowers or something. Hard to tell with these ancient video games. Maybe go in the red doors. You can see platformers trying to emerge from the uh, primordial muck. <laughs> If I go in a red door, that's where the enemies are. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Shit. Whoop. Well, that's how to play seesaw very badly. Mad Akiba as seesaw, and Munitani as director. Oh, thank you, Munitani. Challenge Derby. Usually, don't play horse racing games, especially ancient ones. But considering this is Pony Canyon. I felt, uh, we owed him a little bit. I'm really mad that Pony Canyon was just a merger name and it had nothing to do with, like, the CEO having some kind of absolutely bonkers dream yeah. and incorporating that into their logo. Or no, sorry, it's literally just Pony Inc. merging with Canyon Records. I'm not gonna bother placing a bet or anything because that's boring, but this is what a horse racing game looks like on MSX. I know those are jockeys on the back of those horses, but with the low fidelity of the graphics, it kind of looks like the horses have mounted guns. Cool. Like, yeah, yeah, like, sorry. I guess, I guess these games display in a smaller window than I thought. You can zoom in if you want. Okay. Alex tried to fix this mistake before the stream, and I told him to not. That's my, t <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> They're going blue, the horse. Edging out, yellow, the horse. And way out in first is Red the Horse. Red the Horse wins by several lengths. 
Thank you, Red Everyone Boys. else, go to the glue factory. That's how we do here on Challenge Derby. <laughs> yeah, there were ponies, and there was maybe a canyon in the background. Now, if you place some bets here, you'd be uh, winning big. That's it. That's Challenge Derby. Challenge Derby. Do you feel challenged? A little bit. Next up, why don't you show the box art for this next game? Okay. Checkers in Tan Tan Tanuki. Okay, so I thought this game was called Ultra Fantasy. The subtitle down at the bottom says uh, Checkers in Tan Tan Tanuki, but yeah, Ultra Fantasy. This box art is really evocative of something. Fantasia. Fantasia. This is literally, the, uh, this is literally from uh, Pastiche of Fantasia. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right, let's see what Checkers in Tan Tan Tanuki is like. You're on the old MSX. Thank you, Paste Bean, for the 47 month Risa. Holy man, that's a lot of months. Whoa, what? cool. Who's Who this? Is that? That is some kind of idol boy. Yeah, probably an idol. Um, well, we're leaving a trail of music notes behind us. So I thought this was going to be Checkers. I think just the character's name is Checkers. Okay. And I'm unsure how it relates to the idol group or person. Checkers were a Japanese rock band. Okay, thank you, Trough. Thank you. Oh my god. Hey! That raccoon's eating my my music notes! You cut that out, you wily creature. Oh, I see. Did you see what happened there? Yeah, he ate the guy. He follows the trail, and if it uh, intersects with guys, he eats them. So essentially, you're setting up a path for these guys' is their doom. No, 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 go over the music notes. Get eaten by my raccoon. Nice! Sick! I kind of like this. It's like a risk-reward Pac-Man. No! No! Okay, good. What would you do if you had a, a Tanuki who would kill at will? Just anyone? No comment! No comment, just uh, just in case this actually I ever get the chance to meet. If a, we're ever a lucky tanuki. enough to meet a murderous tanuki, yeah. Especially one who's gonna do my bidding, like you know, if it's just a regular murderous tanuki, sure. I see. You can't reverse course. I tried to back up there, but it's like Pac-Man where you can't turn around. Good. Do you think Checkers the band was named after Checkers the dog? That's a question I can't answer. Okay. I have no clue. I do know what our next game is. It's come on, Peacot. Peacot. Come on, Peacot. It's stream time, Peacot. Come on. <laughs> Computer designed by Pony. You a Pony fan? Uh, so far, I'm okay. liking what I see. What the fuck? Hey! <laughs> okay, Checkers was probably named after the checkered clothing they would wear. What is going on? That. Come that, on, Pico! B -b 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 Pico! What is that? Pico! Is that gonna kill you? What is that? I'm calling to it. Pico! Come here! This is a boy and his blombie. Pico, kill my enemy for me. This is a theme I'm noticing. Can we jump over, Pico? We can! Yeah, 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 go! Go, Pico, go! I'm pushing him into it, he doesn't want to go. No, come over here now! He's... Okay, he, Pico can eventually kill the guys. He just doesn't want to. He just... We, you gotta push him into it. There we go. See, this, this is a learning process. This is an Ichio game! Whoa, he can fly! Pico can do stupid things. I guess you get a certain amount of health. Oh, it's up there in the upper right. He became a ball and he's crushing everyone. Come on, crush. So the last couple of games are kind of innovative in the fact that they have this indirect attack method. I just like this animation. <laughs> Pico, come over Pico. here! And he bumps into us. We can use him as a platform. Uh-oh, Pico. Kill that guy for me. Yeah, this song's kind of good. Damn, I'm pretty good at this. Oh, you can do air jump combos. Dude, Alex, this is sick. hacky sack with Pico. <laughs> Pico, you're the best hacky sack a boy could ask for. I wish... I don't think Pico, I'm just assuming, is 
work. I don't think it's based on anything that really is like an, an existing property, but I want it to be an existing property because I want Peacoat merch really bad. Me too. I just want a shirt of that little guy screaming. So he comes first vertically to you, and then he goes horizontally. Weird little guy. I bet later levels are kind of a pain in the ass. I love pushing him and bouncing around it as a ball. I do like the way he rolls. Yeah, yeah, get him. Get him, Pico. Pico, help! Pico! Pico's green, is that good? I got a, uh... A corncob pipe. This game's kind of amazing. I didn't expect that, honestly. I just <laughs> wanted to load it up because it's called Come On Pico. I didn't expect this innovative gameplay design. But here we are. Oh my god. Okay. Whoa! You get him! Get him! Tan Tan Tanuki is apparently based on a movie whose plot is that Checkers are Tanuki disguised as a human rock band. Whoa. What the? Okay, the, 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 the lore. That's a cool thank plot. You, thank you for the info code, man. The lore. This game is shockingly playable, and I could play a lot of it, but we have mini games to get to tonight. Why don't I just die one more time? Yeah. See what happens. This warrants more investigation. I wonder if this is by a famous developer or something and Pony Canyon just published. This is my last life. I hope this has a cool game over screen. Probably not, but this game's got me interested. Oh, <laughs> Pico! He's left behind in a cruel world without me. Come Sorry on, Pico. Pico. Not bad, not bad. Let's play Crusader. Don't know what this is, just know the title. We'll find out together. Okay. Oh, it's another uh, compile game. All right. Okay. This is a fancy looking game, Danny. Princess has been kidnapped. You must save Princess. This is looking like ghosts and goblins to me. Especially that, that demon guy. Is this ghosts and goblins by way of compile? This could be the best game ever made. I was gonna say, I like the ghost and goblin -y guy. You push down to use your sword and the button to jump. Do I want those eggs? You an egg fan? Should I grab them? I, I, I would assume so. They're probably good for me. They're yolks. They're full of snakes! Oh, that's not good, Danny! Danny, that's my nightmare, Matt. Ah. Opening up an egg and finding a snake inside. It's one of those freaking snake eggs. Yeah, no clue how Compile got the the, uh, the the scrolling so smooth on the MSX. This looks great for MSX one. Yeah. System notoriously had pretty jerky scrolling if you ever look at some of the games. Even like Konami shmups tend to look a little chunky. This is pretty neat. I'm also really bad at it. Uh, beware of opening eggs because they may have snakes in them. Moony Tani, you're moving up in the world. Fantasy Zone, huh? Now, I, I took note, this was not released on SG-1000. This is not a Sega-produced game. This is, in fact, a Pony Canyon-developed port of Fantasy Zone for MSX. You're curious, right? I'm very curious. I like the rainbow. Let's see what this game looks like. I like that it says presented by Pony. Presented like, by Pony. Like horse. Oh my god. Oh, my eyes. What did they do, sweetie? I feel like I was at the Bored Ape convention. <laughs> I really, yeah. I'll have to show you the photo of the lightsaber where they were blasting the eye. Man, I, I, I kind of like this aesthetic. They tried. They really tried. Wait, I want the bombs. Yeah, give me those. 
No, give me the give me the big wings. Damn it. Whatever. I don't need it's anything. Fine. I think you had to use the keyboard there. MSX, this is usually what shoot 'em ups look like. This kind of jerky scrolling. Even Sega knew better than to try to bring this to the SG-1000, though, which had equivalent hardware. But if you really had to put Fantasy Zone on MSX hardware, this is what it looks like. It's so abstract. Like, the, the enemy dispensers, they just look like little cardboard cutouts. Yeah, they look like background characters. I mean, background uh, images. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. Wow. It's colorful, but... I don't know if I want to play this. I do know I want to play Final Justice! <laughs> based on the Joe Don Baker movie, I'm sure. I was gonna sure. say, is this based on the Joe Don Baker movie? That's all I've been able to think about since I saw that in the list. I was like, okay. Because, you know, they're, they're a media conglomerate. Well, this is from Compile. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is the part of the movie where he says, go ahead on, and then just launches off into space. <laughs> Okay, but how sick would that be? That would be cool. You can imagine he's in the spaceship. There's a beer. I'm just saying, the world was ready for Mitchell for MSX, and uh, Pony didn't deliver. <laughs> Me and, and our roommate were talking about different versions of... Uh, of... Yeah. Of Mitchell, but with Billy Mitchell, and then with Joni Mitchell. The Joni Mitchell one has been... I've been thinking on that. <laughs> I like both of those. Let's greenlight both of those uh, and option them for release. We can get Billy Mitchell for his own biopic, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, no, we were actually... Ta we were actually, uh... I, I, I was... <laughs> We were actually casting John Wick with uh, with Joni Mitchell. And oh, okay. Stuff. Okay, not not the Mitchell film, but I think the Mitchell film would work well with Joni Mitchell. Well, this still seems to be a pretty good shoot 'em up, despite the lack of uh, relevance to the source material. Go to the next space. Compile would become pretty famous for their shoot 'em ups, and this is one of the first ones. And it just happened to be Pony Canyon there to scoop it up. Not knowing that they had a, a secret genius developer on their side <laughs> releasing these amazing games. Because back then, to a publisher like Pony Canyon, it was just like, whatever, a game's a game. If it's finished, we can release it. Let's play some more of those Pony Canyon games like Fruit Panic. I tried to get one version of this game to work, but none of them do. I'm hoping this one pulls through. Walking Yankee! This title screen, uh... <laughs> I'm not sure what's up with that. It's good, is what it is. Bonus walkie to 20,000 points. Bonus walkie. You are walkie. I, I am. sure am. Uh-oh. Oh my god. Well. Oh, it's pack. I know Mouse what the ins I know what the inspiration for this is. <laughs> Uh, if anyone knows what game this is based on, feel free to say so in chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of their games are innovative, some less so. This is very obviously based on an existing Namco property, but it's with delicious fruit instead of stolen property. I guess it's okay. It's... Hurry up! Versus Nyankees. They're even called Nyankees! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on, guys. You gotta try harder than that. They even use the same fruit as Pac Man. This is like a Namco mashup. Alright. You you had your you had your laughs, Pony Canyon. You're not gonna make me play this for much longer. How about Ghostbusters? Well, there is something strange in the neighborhood. Yeah? Yeah. Who should you call? Uh, shit, 311? Yeah. There's that bouncing ball. Uh, Ghostbusters! Uh, if there's something strange, 
neighborhood. In your neighborhood? Uh, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Okay. David Crane's Ghostbusters. Uh, may we start the game? No, we have to listen to the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to push enter and space and all the buttons on the, uh... Pushing escape. Pushing G for ghost. I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> I'm sure the game will be worth it. Oh man, we it's have never. Yeah, it's just. It's just gonna play like the fucking bridge and shit. <laughs> it's gonna do like the extended club mix. <laughs> An invisible man sleeping in your bed. Who you gonna call? I heard a new Ghostbusters uh, thing came out, and um, Muncher's not in it. No! Why? How could they do that to our new friend? This is not going to end. This is just going to be I don't know if we're going to play the game. <laughs> okay, we're at the if you're all alone, pick up the phone part of the song. This is near the end. Ghostbusters. Are you afraid of a ghost? <laughs> oh no, it's going to the bridge. We're not. <laughs> I heard it like I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not going to go to the bridge. Okay. So, this thing had a couple of shogi games. Let's show them off real quick. You can see an obvious order of, imp of improvement over these two games. First up is shogi. <laughs> what do you yep. think? Yep. Oh, good move, good move. Mm. Damn it! You got Shogi'd! Alright, you've seen Shogi, but what about Koji Tanigawa's Shogi, Shinan? Okay, this is gonna be like a huge upgrade, right? Massive upgrade. Full audio. Oh my god. Well, yeah, look. Okay, they added a, a lady. And it's more realistic. Music is not just beeps, that's good. Look at that fanciness. So much love went into this compared to the mere shogi. Look at that I face. Lo I love I love that oh my god. <laughs> Live reaction images. <laughs> We're gonna try this again. He did the same thing! Danny you got owned. You really just gonna take all my pawns? Well, I'm gonna... Oh, you can't move the pawns like this? That sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> We're gonna switch off from MSX in just a little bit, but for the last couple of games, let's say, uh, let's try some Lunar Ball. Okay. This is also from Compile. One of the more famous ones from the era. A strange ball game. Yeah. And the neat thing about this game is you can turn up the friction to be really high or turn it to be so that there's very little friction at all. Okay. So let's play it with no friction. So all these games that Compile produced for Pony Canyon, they all have the Pony Ka logo all over them, and Pony Canyon is just glad to take credit, but I don't know. The best games we've seen so far have just been all Compile's work. Yeah, for sure. I guess the Back to the Future game was okay. But uh, this is really more the Compile show than the Pony Canyon show at this point. They were there when they needed them. They had to be the money guy. Someone's got to be the money guy. To see this kind of physics simulation, I imagine, must have been amazing back then. Oh, yeah. Very simple. Very effective. It's pool, but lunar. A strange game. It is a strange game. You know it was big back in the mid-80s? For some reason. What? <laughs> Othello. Yeah! We had Othello fever in America. I don't know I what the deal was. The world. I don't know what the deal was, but Pony was here to capitalize on it. 
God. Move now! All right, all right. Look at that fancy little animation. It's Othello. You've seen it before, but I did. I do think it's worth mentioning because they had one of the earliest Othello adaptations on computer platforms, okay. which I imagine had a hell of a market. Othello really was huge. I I really am not joking that Amer that we did have Othello fever in the in the, the 90, 80s, I should say. And computer players especially had more time for this shit than uh, console players. What are you gonna do on a computer? There's no Super Mario on the computer. Well, on the PC-88 there was, but let's not talk about that. Othello! Othello! Othello was brought to the MSX by Pony Canyon, and you know what else was brought to the MSX by Pony Canyon? What? Pitfall. Oh, hey! I know that game! And this version's even a little bit fancier than the 2600 original. It's got some intro animations. A little bit better color. Pitfall Harry's got a red cardigan. He's styling. Otherwise, this is pretty much just the Pitfall you knew and love. But this comprises a whole lot of the Pony Canyon library that you're not going to see tonight. Essentially just ports of existing Activision computer and console games. Some of it really old. Ports of games like Demon Attack and Keystone Capers. And then some of it was uh, based on more modern computer games, which... I don't have a point of reference for. The ports for those could be hilariously bad or really good. I wouldn't know. I'm just going to stick to what I know. Stepping on campfires. I was going to say, you stepped in the fire, honey. <laughs> but you know what? While we're on the subject of Pitfall, why don't we do a little Retro Pal sidebar okay. about what Pony Canyon did with the Pitfall license? Alex, why don't you blank out our video screen here and start up MAME. Okie dokie. Because, Alex, you are going to have the rare opportunity of playing the PC-88 version of Super Pitfall. Oh, okay. Give me a second here to just make some arrangements. It's got to be you, because it's all keyboard controlled. Oh, no! Initially, I wanted to do more PC-88 games for this stream, but already, this is already spiraled out of control in terms of scope. And when I looked at the list of PC-88 games supported by MAME, it was one of those... Uh, don't gaze too deep at the abyss, otherwise it gazes back at you sort of deals. So I got a lot to sort through when it comes to PT-88 games. But I did want to show off one very important game. Super, Super Pitfall. Pitfall. Yeah, yeah, do it. Alex, you are so lucky to be playing this version of the game. Most Why? people don't know that this version exists. Okay. Uh-huh. I love unknown problems. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Problems with the printer, magnetic tape, timing graphics. We don't. We don't need to know. One second here. Just have to make a quick adjustment. There we go. Okay. Let's go. We're loading. Can I pass the word? No. Okay. In fact, you have no access to any uh, MAM controls. As far as this window is concerned, it is a PC-88 computer. Okay. And in fact, you can't even hit escape to escape. You have to close the window. Oh, wow. So this is some pretty ancient bullshit that has been, has been pretty well buried in modern senses. Uh, so you want to use the uh, numpad, actually. Okay. And there's a jump and a shoot. Oh, I see. Okay. What is it like? Space to jump and shift, shift, shift to, to jump. jump. All right, Alex, have fun. Play some Super Pit Fall. It's two words in this version. Uh, go down that ladder. Look, there's treasure down there. You can get it if you want, okay. if you're brave. Be brave, Pitfall Larry. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know how he's related to uh, Pitfall Harry. Pitfall Gary. Hey, we both stepped on campfires within the last two minutes. I think that's kind of beautiful. It is. We're just showing off what we love. Some more Circus Charlie action here. <laughs> you never played games with a numpad before? 
Maybe you have, it's just probably been a while. Back in when I was like a, a wee child, yes. Okay, this isn't so bad. I've played worse. Yeah, just play a couple more screens. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's I just wanted to set baseline expectations for what we're about to show after this. Something you could do in this game is duck and shoot. You try doing that on the uh, the frog up there, if you okay. will. So, pretty complex game for its time. You can jump and duck and shoot at the same time. What the fuck? That's pretty impressive. All right, at this point, you may be thinking, "What the hell? This isn't ah, the this isn't the Super Pitfall I know and love." Yeah, in fact, they made a PC88 version that was actually pretty fun to play. It's flick screen based. It's more traditional. It's more in line of uh, something like a ZX Spectrum platformer. But I think the graphics are kind of okay, and the gameplay pretty solid for a platformer. You could do much worse way back then. Yeah, yeah. I like the bird. Whoa! Hold on. Free diamonds. I need these. I'm always needing diamonds. Yeah, this is the original okay. version. Uh, oh, cool. oh, 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 there's a Fleur de Lis up there. Give me, give me, give me. Yeah! We're French now. <laughs> Are we? Well, it's a Fleur de Lis, so I'm assuming. It, it could be from New Orleans instead. Speaking of which, it's been so long since I've had an eater root beer. I need one. Sorry, so I was watching a vlog where someone had one. They had a they had a root beer float with like caramel ice cream and a beater root beer. Oh my god, like, that I'm sounds going delicious. To destroy you, I need that. Hey, it was a key! Okay, cool. Hey, hey making hey. progress. I kind of enjoy this. Isn't this great? Yeah. Especially for an ancient crusty ass computer back then. You wouldn't expect to get a quality platformer. Now, usually, Pony Canyon ended up ported stuff like the Ultima games or the Dungeons & Dragons computer RPGs. But occasionally they would strike out and do something like uh, Super Pitfall using an existing license they had access to and making something new and original and actually pretty good. Do you like this room? It's great. This is, is this Dracula's castle? Yeah. This is where Dracula gets it on. A lot of campfires in a Dracula's castle. Yeah. He's not very good about fire safety. Hey, nice work. You did pretty good. You got further than I did in testing. Wait, really? Yeah. Cool. All right, so we have a successful computer game. You know what? For some easy money, why don't we just port this over to consoles and just rake in the money? Here is Super Pitfall on Famicom. Should be a pretty straightforward port. Pony owns all of it. They got the uh, they got the go ahead from Activision. Let's see how the NES version turned out. Uh huh. All right. Remember when you went down the first ladder and found the treasure? Yeah. Was... Oh. <laughs> so instead of a flick screen based uh, action game, this is more of an open ended exploration based platformer? You have this whole world to explore, and you unveil items by jumping in random places. It's significantly less compelling than the PC-88 game, in my opinion. So notice this. You can duck, and you can shoot. But can you duck and shoot? No, you can't. All your shots go over the frogs and uh, spiders. Something you could easily do in the PC-88 version, I just oh, want yeah! to point out. You were shooting all those frogs. Thank you, Carmen, for the 200 bits you said earlier, but thank you for Pitfall Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This game's full of blind jumps and stuff you can't see coming. Instant death around every corner. These sprites are pretty good, though. Now, we previously covered this during our Micronic showcase because, surprise, surprise, this game is developed by Micronics. No. The people who brought Ghosts and Goblins to NES along the uh, other games. Pretty infamous, especially because it got released in the US. We didn't have that context of there being a PC-88 original and this being just kind of a jacked up version of that. All we got was this, so all we thought was, this just sucks. 
sorry, we don't know the storied history of Super Pitfall. All we know is we got this shitty game for some reason. Yeah, I'm also kind of marveling at how much better the, the PC-88 version was. What the hell? That's the thing. On computers, uh, Pony Canyon was licensing games from talented indie developers. Here, they just farmed them out to... People who were just coming to grips with how the Famicom worked. People who were working out of their garages, supposedly. Uh, companies that were supposedly just one or two people. All those things apply to uh, Micronics. <laughs> so while we're here, why don't we check out a few other Famicom games published by Pony Canyon. Okay. Like Onyanko Town. This is another Micronics game. You ever play this one? Yes, uh, I like this game except for the audio that just drives me bonkers. The audio is so grating. It's pretty. It's a pretty cute game, though. So you control a mother cat in search of her kittens in a town full of dogs and policemen. And you have to trap people over the, uh, the, the manholes, if I recall. Yeah! Oh no, and I fell down too. too! I thought I had to close up the manhole cover, I, like, a la, uh, what's that game? The manhole? <laughs> no! Hey, Ankyo Alien! Okay, sorry. Man, oh no! I'm so bad at Onyanko Town. So if you've ever seen games like this and think, just what was this publisher thinking? Did they play these games? Did they know what they were doing? Well, maybe they did, but also more of their focus was on the PC market at the time, maybe. Maybe they just viewed consoles as like a less serious sort of business that you needed to put just a little bit of money into. Yeah, they were like, consoles? This is for babies. Uh, MSX, this, that's where the real shit is. This one company's saying they'll make us a kitten game for 20 bucks. You want to do it? Hey, money's money. Money's money. The Pony Canyon slogan. But weirdly enough... Like, you would think that would result in nothing but shitty games, but they got so many great indie develops uh, stuff for the PC-88 and so on. The cops got me. The fishmonger came out after you with a knife. Oh, it was the fish police. Yeah, oh, jeez, I hate those guys. Surely we have at least one good Famicom game here in the bunch. And surely, <laughs> this being a Famicom Disk System game, it has to be good. Yeah, FDS, uh, sign of quality. Yeah, <laughs> big warning sign here. This cheapo publisher uh, making cheapo games here on the Famicom Disk System where the costs are much lower. Oh, it's Milo and Otis! Yeah, it's Koneko Monogatari, The Adventures of Shatron by Pony Inc. And there's their uh, mysterious and kind of uh, off-putting eyeball logo. I love the eyeball logo. I want to kiss that cat. Orange cats are so good. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, this game you have to do the disc swap manually oh, because annoying. it's special. Because it's by Pony. Pony! Oh my god, I look like that. <laughs> you know, these games being made by actual ponies makes a lot of sense. Okay, everyone, look at that run animation. That jump animation. The trees have weird, uh. Physics? I don't know what the deal is here. You jump on him and eggs come out. Ooh, thank you, single play for the 100 bit. Super Pitfall is one of the first three video games I ever owned, so I loved it. Yeah! Oh my god. Well, if you didn't have any point of reference, you might have been able to, to, to enjoy that. That is such a weird game, though. I think you got it for the 100 bits. Fish Police? From where are you coming from? Fish Police? <laughs> you are. No, that's. uh, No, whatever. It, it works. It works. Yeah, I love that kitty, and I love their belly. Tess has a belly like that. This is a good kitten sprite, I gotta admit. I like the sun up there. Kind of weird that the game runs at, looks like, 15 frames per second. <laughs> but I'm not Pony Canyon. I'm no Famicom expert. Obviously, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, the trees have jiggle physics. Yeah, why? If you set your age to 99, does it jiggle more? Audio. Look at that little rhino. Maybe it's more of a rhino beetle. It's a beetle. Shit. 
getting banned. I'm right, though. Yeah, that's fair. I forgot what I said, but I'm right. Yeah, you're right. Well, also here on Famicom was a port of Tiger Heli, a very popular and famous Toa Plan shoot 'em up. Brought to the Famicom by Micronics. A lot of Micronics I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. You just know some exec back then was all like, compile, Micronics, uh, flip a coin. <laughs> we'll, we'll just get whoever to develop this game. Compile says they'll do it, but uh, Micronics says they'll do it for a dollar cheaper, so... Oh. Looks like I'm gonna win the Executive of the Year award. This was also released in the U.S. by Acclaim. It just makes sense that Acclaim and Pony Canyon would team up in this sort of way. Boy, this version is not great. I was gonna say, this doesn't look very good. I like the background detail, but in terms of play, it's not so good. I guess it's better than something like, what was that, Sky Shark? Which was brought to NES by Software Creations. So it had good music, but uh, Euro shmup design sensibilities, and it was kind of impossible. These buildings look like crap. They're just solid <laughs> colors. It's minimalist, Danny. I guess so. Did anyone tell the Micronics guy to try? No. It literally was Mike, you could, know. could he have gotten a note from Pony Canyon that just said try? <laughs> Please resubmit this game if you try with the graphics. Surely their next game's better. Alright! Well, thank you all for watching! We've played this before. We've done a full playthrough of the famous Commodore 64 version. But since then, someone has actually translated the Famicom version of Law of the West, so you can play this one in English now. This is a narrative-based adventure game where you're a sheriff. You look forward. You can shoot the other guy at any time, if you please. Or you can talk it out. Well, yes, son, and it's a pretty nice town. Oh, well, good. Well, you can... You yes, can it, it can be quite nice here. <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me, would you? <laughs> I love this... I love this... What a chicken! He shot me! <laughs> that guy went... <laughs> That guy was hot and cold, turning on a dime. You're just like, you the sheriff of this shitberg? Well, yeah, it is a pretty nice town, I guess. Fuck you, I'm gonna shoot you! <laughs> and yeah, the whole game's like this. Or you can just cut out the middlemen and... <laughs> this game's great. Highly recommend trying this out if you've never played it. It's good stuff. Oh, God. All right. I forget what this is. I hope it's good. Oh, no it's not. I know what it is. Do you want to spoil No, I'll let, I'll let you discover it. Well, this has got to be... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Adapted by Pony. Bad. Look at this title screen. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so like I said, they did a lot of work publishing popular computer games of the era, most from Activision. They also had to deal with Epics who made games like California Games, Summer Games, and unfortunately, Winter Games. Don't forget Caveman Games. <laughs> That's not part of the series. <laughs> Is Caveman Games from Epics? Now you have me doubting myself. Anyway. Yeah, maybe not. They brought this to first the Famicom Disk System and then the NES in North America. Uh, yeah, let's compete in all the events. Name. Everyone rise for the national ass. I think America should have, like, an official ass that we salute instead of the flag. God, I'm with you! See? This is... I'm actually surprised millennials aren't jumping on this. The most, like, you know... We need a more relatable symbol of freedom. The eagle? What does that say? Now an ass. That says it all. Anyway, we're doing hot dog aerials. Uh, they didn't hot like that. Hot dog aerials! This is better. Nope. 
Hey, 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 hey! I survived! That was just okay. So if you thought this game was torture on the NES, imagine playing it on the Famicom Disk System where it had loading times in between the horrible events. Sport's not great, it gets rid of a lot of the events, and uh... You hear that music? <laughs> okay, Caveman Games was not by Epix. Okay, okay, I thought so. I've been I just vindicated. Assumed. Yeah, literal cold jams. And since this game was brought over from C64, where you'd expect to do some joystick waggling, the uh, the controls in this event are just mashed left and right, which feels very uncomfortable on a D-pad, and I'm going to quit. All right, Pony, enough with the Famicom Disk System games. We we get it. Wait, that's a terrible pony. Yeah, I gotta do the. Yeah, yeah. That's... Sorry, I, f I feel like some horse is probably watching at home listening to me being like, Alex! He's like, what the fuck? You can't say that. Mato Hokai, the hero of Babel. Presented by Pony Canyon. See if you can tell what this game's inspiration was. Uh, the Bible. <laughs> Other than the Bible. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. If you're familiar with your 8-bit uh, action games. They, they said this was by Carrie Lab, who did, um... Mystery Quest, I think? Are you kidding me with this shit? Danny! Imagine Simon Belmont if, instead of fighting Dracula, he fought Blobs. So, why is Simon Belmont in short shorts here? See? Sex appeal. Like, it's like a thong or short short. He's wearing something real short and sexy. Now, the great thing about this game is that you have to level up to progress, and to get to level two, you need 100 experience points. Yeah, you know, what if Belmont was a fucking twink? You notice, you notice how many experience points I got from each of these, uh, these blocks? One. And I think you need to get to level three before you can progress. So there's, uh, you just, you just wander back and forth and grind on blobs. Some people like that. Thank you, AI October, for the 100 bits. Simon Bellbottoms. <laughs> That'd be better than this. Yeah, he's just, I'm sorry, I kind of, I, I, I like with the boots and everything. It's a good with aesthetic. The, with the fur? Boots with the fur. Yeah, it's like a crop top and... I got a thing. Some more weapon points for me. So, yeah, even if you did like this game, you would have to grind for hours just to progress. This is totally what you'd expect from the developer of Mystery Quest if they had to develop a Castlevania clone. <laughs> Never came to the US for some, uh, for some reason. Wonder why. Alright. I, like I swear, I swear we're almost done with the Famicom Disk System games. I just need to get this out of my system. Okay. My disk system. This is what happens when we get a gesture remote. You you start gesturifying too. <laughs> it's the uh, gesture proximity effect. This dandy, is dandy. That's me. This is dandy from Activision, presented by Pony. Dandy from Pony. A dandy pony indeed. Lord Judas. That's a funny way of putting it. Usually uh, that message says please wait, but that said I'm in the middle of loading. Let's see what Dandy's like. From what I saw, this seems to be a gauntlet-like on C64. Mm. But <laughs> you've seen the quality of games that they've released for Famicom Disk System. Let's see how this one ended up. Wow. Oh, that's me in the red. I'm Dandy. They're also wearing a crop top. What's going on? What's going on in Pony Canyon? Gotta wear a crop top. Okay. got blob. I did get blob. This looks bad. <laughs> this looks bad for a Famicom Disk System game. Very blocky sprite art. I guess this being a port from a more famous computer game, they didn't have much of a reason to make it, you know, good. Oh my god. <sighs> well... 
the good news is this is Famicom Disk System, so we can go right back to the store and flash this with another game. Good, good. Just overwrite that disk. It's not dandy anymore, it's, uh... Law of the West again. It's no, Law of the we're, West. We're going back to Law of the West. There sure are a lot of bad FDS games, huh? Mm-hmm. I like that it's called Dandy. I don't like that I'm dead. I'm sorry you died. I'm not. Next game. Damn, girl! Wow, okay! The first ever console appearance of Art Dink is here on the Famicom, courtesy of Pony Canyon, with Arctic, an active rail-playing game. You know, Art Dink, the Tale of the Sun guys. The, I can't uh, believe they're here. The A Train guys. All right, you you figure this out. All right, Alex. No, you do this. Oh, I see. Yeah, you see. Oh, I kind of see. You have to change all the uh, alignments of the rails, and then. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, I get it. But, I get it. But you also, need to, yeah. Oh, I see. It's like I get it. And the Amidar movement. <laughs> I get it, but I don't want to get it. Is the thing. So if if this looks fun to you, this is the kind of game Pony Canyon put on Famicom in 1990. This came out after Super Mario Brothers 3. This is a late era Famicom game. We'll finish up the Famicom sidebar with. One of their very final Famicom releases, which also is a port of another PC game. This one much older than you might expect for a game coming out in 1990. Imagine, you are the galaxy's most successful Krypton 3 salesman. Ooh. On the way to close the biggest sale of your career, your brand new Nash Sombrero has blown a capacitor. In the, the reactor, reactor valve. valve. Yeah, an English language story for this Japanese exclusive game. Let's see if you can figure out what this game is. You exit the gravway and coast down into the wrong side of town. Now, all you need to do is find a phone and a repair sled will be on its way. The only signs of life seem to be coming from a shoddy structure three doors down and across the street. I'm sorry, but our auto mod got mad at the word honky. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it, but that's really funny. I'm sorry. Opening the door, you make your way down a flight of debris-covered stairs. Something loathsome scampers over your feet on its way to the activities below. So if you don't already know what this game is, what's your guess? Everyone post your guesses as to what this is. A shout of recognition is heard as whatever it was enters the smoke-filled room. I do like the atmosphere here. You stumble into the room, and suddenly, it's as silent as the depths of space. Several pairs of hostile eyes, and a few sets of three, challenge you to enter. text is good. This must be directly from the PC version. I think this was a black and white Apple game. Like the original Apple Macintosh mm -hmm. had a game called Shuffle Puck Cafe and for some reason in 1990 Pony Canyon brought it to Famicom. I was gonna say, want to show off the cover? Yeah. That's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. And here you can see him represented in game. The these sprites look pretty good actually. They do! So who should we pick? Uh, I like Hogman, but I'm just a Hogman fan. Let's go Hog Wild. Okay. This part's in Japanese for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And it's air hockey. Again, if you've used uh, black and white Mac computers before, you may be familiar with this game. It looks very similar. They've just gussied it up a little bit for the Famicom. So that's not every game Pony Canyon released for Famicom, but that's a good portion of them. What do you think of uh, their output? <laughs> I think that it was way worse than the MSX. What the hell? <laughs> it's a little bit deranged, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just bad ports of games, bad games to begin with. Weird Getting original licenses. games from people like Carry Lab, who had no business making games. And then Shuffle Puck Cafe, which a very late port, but also pretty good. This seems all right to me. Get to play air hockey against the pig man. I'm not going to complain. I'm not very good at this game. I wish you could do that move where, like, you uh, grab the puck with the uh, the thing that you're using to hit it. Yeah, I like doing that. Is that move illegal in air hockey? Can it's anyone tell me? It's gotta be illegal, but I do it all the fucking time. Yeah, I, that's, like, the first thing I do. I try to grab it and then, like... And aim your shot? Yeah. yeah. Do they allow that at the air hockey champions? Probably Trips. not. All right, that's uh, that's Pony Canyon on Famicom. If we have time later, we may show off some of their NES games as well. That's a whole other story. But for now, I think we got to get back to MSX. This is the midpoint of the uh, Pony Canyon stream. Feel free to get up and get a beverage, get a snack, pet a cat. The, our cats are gone, so... Yeah, they're out of the room. They left. Back to the old MSX. And I pretend like I know what I'm talking about with this thing. Mm -hmm. Seriously, having to load that cassette <laughs> five minutes in advance of the stream was pretty funny. I mean, I'm not catching the puck with my hands. I'm using the the, the thing. I'm not going to break my fingers. I'll yeah, the, the puck puncher, you yeah. know. All right, back in the world of MSX. Let's resume our look at the Pony Canyon library with the game that comes after Pitfall, which is... The police story. A story with police? I Jackie Chan. Another Jackie Chan movie. Jackie Chan in the police story. Our second Jackie Chan Pony Canyon game. For some reason. All right. Let's see how bad I am at this one. Hey, Rolo. What's up? Can you show me the game? Okay, yeah, thank there you. We go. Oh my god. Alex? Yeah? This is a Kageki clone. Okay. Excellent, excellent dank-ass arcade game that was ported to Genesis called Kageki. Actually, I think this predates Kageki by several years, so maybe this is the original. Anyway, we're Jackie Chan in the Pony Canyon building. We're pissed off at the quality of that uh, Spartan X game. So we're here to clean house. I assume that's the plot. Cool punks. I like the way the punks look. They have nice spiky hair. Oh, there's a map of the building down there, I guess. Where are we going? Uh, to a room? Let's go to a room! Hands. Hands in the air! I guess we got gloves. So two things Pony Canyon was into on computers, licensed games and games with Jackie Chan, <laughs> for some reason. Not any other celebrity, just, just Jackie Chan. What happens if we go all the way to the right? Let's push the limits of possibility. Oh, you know, I bet if we, we could go in the, uh, the, yeah, doors, the doors, yeah, on, yeah up there. Uh-huh. I like the screams. I do like the screaming. This is a game I'm completely unfamiliar with. There's just so many games out there, especially on MSX. A whole world awaits you of Jackie Chan gaming. There are so many Jackie Chan games. You get a key? Maybe this is more Tower of Juraga than anything else. <laughs> I've always wanted a Jackie Chan Tower of Juraga game. Well, this is going to go on for a while, but if you want a game like this, you can play the police story for MSX. Next up, we got the Protector. Okay. Who are you protecting? Ghostbusters? Shit, that's not how that goes. No, no. Not at all, Danny. Mm. 
Jackie Chan in The Protector. Oh my god! <laughs> Once again, we find ourselves in control of Jackie Chan. By far the most prolific celebrity here on the MSX. Who knew? Maybe he just had a really good deal with Pony Canyon. Wait a minute, is this Mouse Cop inspired? It is! Oh my god. Pony Canyon, you, you freaks. You freakos and perverts. <laughs> You've decided to unite Mouse Cop and Jackie Chan for some reason. So much Jackie Chan. Unexpected Jackie Chan Showcase. You know, we could probably make an entire stream based on Jackie Chan games. They yeah, have, Chad, uh, someone in chat mentioned that. You really could do a whole Jackie Chan Showcase. We got we got three so far. We have Jackie Chan and Fists of Fire, the arcade games. Uh, there's Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu for NES and PC Engine. This control's kind of strange. I don't know if I like this game. I like that you fell. I like the way you fell and died. That was really yeah. That funny. was really funny. He fell on his ass. Happens to Jackie Chan a lot. Falling on his ass. All right, get ready for our next game, uh, Rush Hour. I was gonna say. If there was a Rush Hour MSX game, Pony Canyon's gonna make it. Wow, this sucks. Actually, <laughs> I don't like this. You got bombed. <laughs> this blows. Oh yeah, the Jackie Chan Zavix game. My god. Yeah, 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 we got some of those. This one I couldn't get to work. Let's see if it works with a keyboard. This is Rinju something. What's the title? Rock and Bolt? Oh no, I I omitted this from the final results. I couldn't figure out what this game is. It's some kind of editing software, but no, I guess the com it doesn't work with the keyboard either. Huh. Random creepypasta game. Disregard. Okay, don't worry about it. Let's play Rock and Bolt. Rock and Bolt! This is another uh, Activision transplant. One player, please. Just one. Give me the one. Oh, you don't expect a numpad, do you? I don't have a numpad. What do you think I am, Rockefeller? Can't afford no damn <laughs> numpad on my wireless keyboard. I was gonna say, in this economy? I guess we're not playing Rock and Bolt. It wants me to push a one button that I don't have. Well, you had your chance. Instead, we're playing, uh, you know what? For our next game, Scooter, why don't we uh, show off the box art first? Chad, look at this. <laughs> look at him. Look I've at him. Never... Can, I, can, I, can I zoom in? Yeah. I've never seen a video game character sadder to be in the situation oh. that he's been in. Usually, like, uh, characters like Pac-Man, they're shown as happy or excited or at least a little bit, uh, they're hustling and bustling. But this guy, the whole weight of the world is upon poor, poor Scooter. Oh, Danny and Alex, are we really playing my game? <laughs> Why are you British? I don't know. It's just how I feel. All right, Scooter. Let's do it. Scooter. I like Scooter. He's a little freak. You like Scooter, but Scooter doesn't like himself. Scooter needs to learn self-love. <laughs> I guess. All right. Scooter. By the Bite Busters. I do like the music. Okay. All right, Scooter. Oh, this is cute! This is Pengo to me. This is Pingo. You gotta line these up. Oh, you can dissolve the blocks. But to what end? Maybe I have to get the fruit. I love this. Danny, this is good. This seems like a pretty pleasant world to be in. I don't know what Scooter's fucking problem is. Oh, he's got a lot on his mind. I guess. I'd be pretty happy if I was a little robot in this world. You want to be a Pengo? I yeah. mean, a Scooter? You did it! Begin at the beginning, the king said, and go on till you come to the end, then stop. What? <laughs> oh my god, are we doing this already? Oh, video game. 
Now, I finally understand Scooter's pain. Thank you, Nick Chaotix, for the sub. Maple Leaf Rag. Yeah, that was a tier 2 sub for 33 months. Thank you. Yeah, Maple Leaf Rag. Aren't that you is happy what to this hear is. It? <laughs> Thank you for the sub. Thank you. You, re you really got a feel for this little guy. How do I get... We'll never figure it out. Don't worry about it. Scooter's just... He's, he was born to die. World is a fuck, he says. We have to end Scooter. You don't have to end Scooter. That's the end of Scooter. That's Scooter. Poor Scooter. Poor Scooter. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's looking at me! Why, Retro Pals, why? Alright, let's move on. Let's play Swing. Oh, I love that. When's the last time you've been on a swing? Oh, too long. Look at that, it's another compile game. We got Moon Nitami. Oh, this is just... Crazy Climber. This is a less crazy, crazy climber. And look, there's a lander over there. From the famous Xanak games. Lander. I love you, Lander. Oh, there's an angry feral lander, too. I like feral lander, that's me. So in this game, I think you have to clean all the windows. There was a thing in there. Who was it? Okay, Scooter was from the developer of the Amiga port of Ninja Warriors. Nice. It's pretty good. Give me that. No! You died. Oh, God! You Compile, you... Compile, you got a dead body on your hands. <laughs> we have to clean that up. Why are we climbing the Compile building, anyway? Uh -huh. Are we looking for a job? I like that the number of lives is uh, represented as man. Yeah. How many men you got left? Oh god, it's blinking so fast. Okay, I gotta climb all the way back down, I guess. Oh, come on! Video game! You can't just... Clean up! You did! <laughs> you can't just kill me on the foot on the doorstep of Compile Headquarters. They wouldn't like that. Well, luckily Compile is expanding and they have another building. I was gonna say, they have another dead body storage unit. <laughs> I like the characters in this. This is a realistic uh, interpretation of a, a window washer's everyday life. Yeah, all the window washers in New York are always having to deal with... Was that here. Horace? Hmm. Okay. Swing. It's by Compile, so it's good. Swing. We're right here at the end of the MSX1 portion of the program, so let's go ahead and play a game some of you know. Xanak. Of course it's by Compile. All the best Pony Canyon games are by Compile. This one later made its way to NES, which is where many of you probably played it. Here's what the original MSX one looks like. Beware, it's kind of chunky. It's a little bit, uh... Oh! Just a little bit chunky. But it plays good. That's Excuse what matters. Me. Yeah, it's MSX, you're gonna have some chunkiness. Now, MSX2, that would fix things a, a little bit. You're on MSX1, this is what your game's gonna look like. I did it. You did it. So this has a lot in common with the NES game. You got the power-ups to get some power-ups really set off the game's AI difficulty system. Like if you get the shield, the game just goes apeshit. But that's this game's big uh, claim to fame, that it uses this background AI that determines how good you're doing, and it adjusts the difficulty in real time. Gotta say, MSX shmups don't look good, but they play great, actually. <laughs> All, a lot of the Konami games, the Parodius games and uh, the Gradiuses that they brought over, those are pretty fun.
Cool. So basically, I guess the story here is... If you played Pony Canyon games on NES, you were fucked. But if you played one on computer, it's odds are it's pretty good. Thank you, Carmen, for the 100 bits. Yeah, take two Xan, I can call me in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a gamer medication. I was gonna say, stop taking Xanac if you're allergic to Xanac. Sorry, I keep getting ads for random pills, and they're all like, don't take this if you're allergic to it. I'm like, I would hope not. Yeah. Hey, there's that little jingle. There's also a second version, which, uh... You know what? Let's go ahead and load it up. Okay. See if I can tell what the differences are. Xanak 2! No, not 2, just okay. a, a second version of Xanak. With Xanax. a fancier title screen, it looks like. Second version. The redo. And believe it or not, this version looks a whole lot like the original. Did it rank us in the original? Did it call us a lieutenant in the original Xanak? Maybe you get military rankings exclusive to this one. Maybe. Oh, the enemies are different. Maybe it's just an entirely different game. I'll leave that up to the shmup fanatics to decide. So there you go. That's a whole lot of Pony Canyon games here on MSX1. But that's not the end of the story because the MSX got upgraded in a big way. MSX2 is what made games like uh, Metal Gear and Snatcher possible. Mm. It was a big, big upgrade in terms of hardware and sound uh, hardware. <laughs> Many different hardwares were upgraded. Many hardwares. So why don't we take a trip over to the other, more advanced MSX emulator and play some of those. Okay. This one's kind of funky, the one for FPGA Mister. It's like one of those bootloaders for an actual system. It's a little, uh, it's got its own quirks that you have to deal with. And not all the games work, but I did sort through these and find some that did. Alex, what are your expectations? My expectations? Better scrolling, better graphics, better sound, better games. Games that are more like uh, MSX1 or Famicom? Uh, games? Oh, oh, like, oh, quality, quality-wise. Um... I think we're going to see games more like the MSX. I'm I'm going to assume that they, the reason the Famicom games suck ass is because they were like, screw consoles, we're going to focus wholly on the MSX. Yeah, that and they didn't have much uh, experience in figuring out what was good or bad in the, the developers they hired. There's no Micronics here on MSX, so that's a big uh, point in their favor. You know what? I think this game will give us a good idea of what the MSX2 does versus MSX1. Because they ported over Fantasy Zone 2. Okay. The Master System exclusive sequel to Fantasy Zone. Here on MSX2 instead of MSX1. Let's see what it looks like. Thank you, Pony Canyon. Well, this looks a whole lot better. This, uh, this looks a whole lot better. They really improved it. Yeah, MSX, uh, the difference between MSX 1 and 2 cannot be understated. It looks a whole lot better. So this just shows that Pony Canyon was interested in bringing over Fantasy Zone. They just didn't really have the hardware capability to deliver it. Bringing over the Master System sequel, it looks a whole lot more like the original game, and it plays better, too. I don't so much like the new mechanics they added, like going to the different areas through warp zones. But this is here if you wanted if you wanted a haunted way of playing Fantasy Zone 2. Now I know why Opa Opa cries. That was fucking weird. That was strange. Weird ending to that game. I hear it's a tragic series. Huh. Next, uh, let's play a game that I don't even know what it is. Malaya no Hiho? Hiho. Hiho. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like Jack Frost. Yeah. What's that guy up to? I think, uh, jail. Thank you, Laserbell, <laughs> for the fifty-seven month resub. Spaghettificated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, come to think of it, we actually played this very recently. Do you do you remember this? This looks familiar. We played this as part of a patron request stream. This game has a fan translation. Oh, yeah! 
forget who requested this, but it's apparently a pretty well-known game. Little did he know. Well, what's going to be awaiting him? And we're Indiana Jones. As many of these games uh, are, you're just Indiana Jones. Welcome to this accursed town. Monster just settled down unnoticed near the peaceful village. Would you help us and see the village elder? Yeah, I guess. So. I like the monsters are settling down. You know, they're 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 for they're making families. Yeah, they're making a life for themselves. Mm -hmm. You do look like Ranger Smith. Finally, Ranger Smith gets the starring role. Some kind of action adventure platformer. We did play this before, but I don't remember much of it. Yeah. Are you the elder? I wish you could just buy random keys like Some that. handmade keys. I don't know where this goes. It's just a key. Just keep trying it on different houses in town. That looks like a baseball fan who you were, who you were punching. <laughs> Congratulations to the Hanshin Tigers. Yeah! Oh my god, you heard about that, right? Finally, finally breaking the curse after all these years. I'm... I'm... All right, we got a knife or something now. We're ready to go. One of the silliest things about me is that whenever baseball teams break a curse, I get very happy for them. It's like, you know what? Good for you, honey. You deserve this. Damn, this seems pretty neat. A kind of Zelda 2 style game, but from Pony Canyon. The blobs are good in this. Oh, the blobs. <laughs> As are the skeletons. Oh my god. What? This game's got good graphics. So, I think so far I was right. These games do seem way more like the uh, MSX than the Famicom. I'm yeah, more like more like actual games instead of cash grabs. Yeah, I'm not getting the stink of, uh, <laughs> of freaking Micronics on this one. Thank you so much, by the way. This is episode 19. Gifting a sub to, to Coma Chameleon. Coma Chameleon. So welcome to Sub Cub. Bleh. Sub Club Coma Chameleon. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Sub Cub. Sub Cub. And thank you for the gift sub. I appreciate it. Next, we got, uh, oh yeah, we're in the freaking disc loader. They yeah. have to make it a whole freaking ordeal just to load a game. What if we played a game called Neketsu Judo? I, I know Neketsu doesn't mean Neko, but I got really excited for a second. It means hot-blooded. I know. Check I... it and see. Pony Canyon making a Judo game. Okay. Oh, this one's a big one. This is a heckin' chonker of a ROM. Look at that. It's got the logo, the eye. The foreboding eye. Miki did this? And Fujiwara? Yeah! 100 bits from Carmen to Ban Dan. He's got a fever of 130. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's learn. <laughs> All right, who are we? One, two, three, or four. Where do you even start with these characters? I'm... Three. Chat just is spamming yeah, three. Yeah, we gotta be three. Wow, he's only 18 and so handsome. He's lived a hard life. <laughs> yeah, what this guy's gone through. He'd be pretty good on the judo court. Field. Pitch. Nice walk. Hey, kid. You gotta play some judo. <laughs> play some judo? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, like it's Ludo. Yeah. Yes, I do believe in the ways of judo. Teach me how to throw people. Oh man, this is an actual training sim, <laughs> and not oh, so God, much of an actual game. Okay. We have to train. We have to use good timing to complete this uh, this training event. <laughs> okay, well let's. Uh... No, no, we 
we've we've arrived at the studio with an inner ear infection. We cannot we there's not gonna be any judo for us today. We <laughs> I just push the button and that happens. Do you just have to tap it or no? Maybe hold in a direction and push it? No. Well at least we're falling safely. We're yeah. falling on our butt instead of on our head. Are you learning to fall? Oh, maybe. Hello, blood sugar judo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last one. Let's do it. <laughs> Get out. Go home. Stop this. Stop this farce. Yeah, he's making us do it again. That's not. That's not happening. Hot blooded judo is too much for me. I'm more about hot yoga. I was gonna say. That's gotta exist, right? I think so. Like sexy yoga? So speaking of uh, Sega ports, okay. we just saw Fantasy Zone 1 and 2. What would... Alex, what would a Pony Canyon version of OutRun look like? I hope it's not like the Amiga version. <laughs> <laughs> Sega presents... OutRun. Sorry, I, I, I featured that clip because I can't that stop clip, thinking about that it. That clip makes me laugh every time. <laughs> There it is, Pony Canyon Inc. Okay. The eyeball rendered in 8 pixels by 8 pixels, and you can still tell what it is. Uh, this one. Oh, it's on FM Station 69. Let's go. <coughs> this looks pretty blombie to me. Fantasy Zone 2, this is not. I guess it's about equivalent to the uh, Master System port. Makes sense. They have similar hardware. <laughs> music. I like the music a lot. I wonder what the deal is between uh, Pony and Sega. What was their licensing deal? What was their focus? Because, like, some of these were just ports over from the SG-1000, but stuff like this is original. I don't know. I think for MSX2, they could have done better than this. This looks pretty... You think so? This looks pretty basic to me. Then again, this is a state-of-the-art superscalar arcade game they're trying to port. What else we got here? What else do we got here? Just a few more games for the MSX2. I'm always glad to look at this stuff because, you know, we never had this in America. Mm -mm. Just in some European countries and in Japan. Let's play another Pony Canyon game by the name of Project A2. Sorry, I saw that and I thought it said Project Aco and I got so excited. But <laughs> that would it's be not, cool. It's not Project Aco. Sorry, anime fans. No, Alex, it's not Project Aco. Well, oh my god. It's another Jackie Chan game. <laughs> what's the deal? What's what's going on here? Did Jackie Chan own a majority stake in Pony Canyon? Was Spartan X that popular that you had to make several other games to capitalize? <laughs> the world just... Japan had Jackie Chan fever. Oh, he's happy in this one. Look at that face! Look at the big, <laughs> the big smile on his face. Is that a chin or a smile? I don't know. It looks like both. I think it's a big old Muppet smile. I think it's a smile too. Wee! He's just a happy guy. So Pony Canyon. <laughs> so far, I'm just going to remember them from Micronics and Jackie Chan. The good system had the Jackie Chan games. The bad system had the uh, Micronics games. Is there a game here, or...? Oh? Oh, oh, there is a game! Holy shit! Oh my god! Okay. He's actually moving like Jackie Chan in this game. He doesn't just fall over like in the other ones. There's some story here. <laughs> some... Jackie Chan's manager was just all in on 
making him uh, the poster boy of the MSX for some reason. This was something I never knew. Also, there's a lot of Jackie Chan movies I've never seen. There are. Is this prison? Let's send Jackie Chan to prison. Okay. Oh, we did. Now it's Castlevania. <laughs> oh man, a Jackie Chan Castlevania. But don't kick me off the stairs! Hey! You're worse than those damn bats in Dracula's Castle. So the last Jackie Chan game was just kind of okay, it wasn't great, but overall these Jackie Chan games have been some of the best from Pony Canyon. I guess that makes sense, them being licensed games, they put in more effort. Mm -hmm. Still, it's just kind of weird for a person to be the face of a, uh, a series instead of just the franchise. Because as far as I know, these movies are unconnected. They're it's not connected, no. They just... They just, you know, they were like, well, Jackie's big, we have the license, because we're a giant media conglomerate, so why not, you know? What's about to happen here? Oh! What? Can I have your bed? I'm gonna jump on his bed. Jackie Chan. <laughs> I can get away with it. Whee! Alright, our next Jackie Chan game is... <laughs> Coming towards the end of the MSX2 library, let's play... Is that a real name? This is real. I don't know what this is. I don't think it's porno, but have uh, have Rolo on the ready just in case. I don't see how you could expect anything untoward or, you know, unsavory to come from a game called Star Virgin. But Star str Virgin. Huh? Stranger, stranger things have happened. Did Pony Canyon get into the porn game industry? Dumb. Let's find out in real time. <laughs> what do we got to lose? Our stream? Uh... Based on the movie? Is there a movie called There's Star a... Virgin? It's a movie called Star Virgin. All right. Virgin of the Stars. Word name. Fruit? Okay. Whoa! Alex, this game's amazing. Is she crucified? She's saying, ah, please help me. <laughs> um, I, I don't, uh-oh. Get real low ready. What? Oh, she transformed into the famous Star Virgin! Alright, I'm being shown the Star Virgin box art. Oh yeah, the box art's pretty good. Wow! Whoa! Whoa! Alex, this is the most incredible game I've ever seen! <laughs> Look at this Wonder Momo shit! That must have been the inspiration, right? This seems very Wonder Momo-esque. It is, yeah. I think I'm gonna lose. I'm trying to kick this thing, but... Being a Star Virgin, there's only so much I can do. So, uh... Is an alien girl with a superpower. She wears an amulet that can sense when men are attracted to her. <laughs> Using this amulet, she can transform into the Star Virgin and use her superpower to protect herself. Uh, she came to Earth to sightsee, but now she's there to save the world from killer robots. I'm very bad at Star Virgin. This game is intriguing, though. It has side scrolling, beat em up action, big monsters. You're basically Wonder Momo. MSX2 is this untamed frontier of gaming that I'm completely <laughs> unfamiliar with. It's good. It could be worth exploring more, I think. Look at that guy. He's beautiful. I do like the little toad freak. Alright, we teased some box art on Twitter. 
uh, that has a couple of robots playing football on yeah, an alien I planet. See this. Like American football. This game is called Super Runner. Super Rambo special. We we came so close to playing that. Pack in video. It's gonna happen someday. Those fucked up Rambo games for NES and MSX. The freaking Predator game for NES. You can't run away from Predator uh, forever. Are you sure? What if I tried? Maybe. Pony Canyon presents. Oh, oh the ultimate team up is back. Who's this? What did they make? Uh, They made... Outrun, no. Did they make one of those uh, Jackie Chan games? I think so. Fancy title screen. Okay. And they're off. Hey! That guy just punched me and took the bag. Hey, get back here. Hey, he took your football. That's my money. Come on, come back. Come on, you guys. Is this based on that John Boyce football thing? Just, this is the strangest football I've seen in my life. I can't catch up to this guy. Once he gets ahead, you just, you just lose. All right, fine. Pop off, see if I care. Alex, what the hell is this? Why is this Dash and Desperados? You know, that Genesis game everyone knows? Yeah, no, Chad already mentioned Dash and Desperados. Was this the inspiration for the, the Desperados? I'm gonna mash the buttons at the start. Okay. Danny, mash buttons. Otherwise, this guy just punches you in the face and wins. Okay. Okay. We didn't get punched. It seems we go a little faster if we uh, jump. Can I jump on his head? Yeah, you get stuck on his head. Oh, give me the bag. Give me that shit. Yeah, go, yeah, go, now go, I'm go, the bag go, man. Go, go, go. How does it feel? How does it feel? You're just jumping on his head! <laughs> <laughs> cool. This game rocks! No way! This is... <laughs> oh, you showed him! <laughs> Fucking get owned. Oh my god, well... Oh, you're not gonna do better than that. Man. I like this. This is a good game. The cover showed a different game than what I was expecting. <laughs> There's not much robot action on uh, faraway planets. Instead, there's just two jerk-offs punching each other. In like a fantasy forest. Yeah, in a fantasy forest. And also it's Dash and Desperados. Give me that shit. Give me that bag. Come here. Yeah. See you later, sucker. See ya. <laughs> yeah! I found the strat. Come on, catch up so I can springboard off your head some more. It's fun. I'll let him catch up. Yeah! Yeah! Excellent. Games just used to be better, you know? You got balled. Or am I balling? You are ball. Okay, I I take it. I like the stranger that stole the ball. Well, this is great. I could play a lot more of this, but <laughs> instead let's move on to our last MSX game. Okay. I feel like we got a good dose of MSX this stream. I feel like uh, that's something that the Retro Pals have been lacking all these years. Just a whole great library out there in front of us, mm -hmm. waiting to be discovered. So let's finish up with the MSX2 version of Xanak EX. Ooh. You saw what the original Xanak looked like. Let's see what the MSX2 can do. Loading ROM. Ooh. Copyright Pony. Mm. I do that. Oh, the scrolling uh, is good now. Yeah, this is good. They fixed it. <laughs> All right. I no longer have any problems with Xanak on MSX. Damn, this looks good. 
I think specifically we ought to have an MSX2 focus stream sometime, because these games intrigue me. And I mean, if the system can make stuff like Metal Gear, there's probably some really good stuff out there. Yeah, I would really like to explore the MSX2 with you sometime. I think that might be fun. Yeah. An American's perspective, for once. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you never hear what Americans think, especially online. Yeah, there's no YouTube videos of people playing MSX games and going, I don't know what the fuck this is. Two it out takes of five. A, it takes a very special talent. Well, I'm here to join the club. Dun, 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 dun. MSX, great platform for Pony Canyon. It must be said, this was their platform, uh, mostly thanks to companies like Compile and uh, the talented developers who made their games. NES, they didn't much care. They were just subcontracting out to anyone. Anyone who had their ads in the, the Japanese classifieds, I guess. That's how you get a job in the game industry, I assume. Hmm. Classifieds? Yeah, yeah, the classifieds. But, uh, we've been tiptoeing around this the entire time. Pony Canyon had a U.S. division, and for a short amount of time, they were very active on the NES. So to close out tonight's stream... Let's play through the games published by Pony Canyon's U.S. division, FCI Interactive. Ooh. Now, we previously encountered these guys during our EGM read-through showcase, where I, it was apparent that FCI was paying them off for promotion because <laughs> they got a ton of ads and all their games were reviewed. But uh, let's give a brief, brief look at every single game that they published in the U.S., or at least most of them, just to get an idea of how this uh, differentiates between the Japanese libraries for the MSX and the Famicom as well. Mm -mm. Yeah, see what we got instead. See if we got uh, the better end of the bargain. Let's do it. Oh, let me adjust this real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little uh, smaller now. Lunar Pool, previously known as Lunar Ball. A strange pool game, they said. All right, we're going to start on round four, and we're going to give ourselves zero friction. Okay. Let's see how this works out for us. I always thought this game was kind of interesting, because instead of just being a straight-up pool sim, it presents these stages, and you have to complete these uh, in a certain amount of shots. And just the fact that they give you this degree of control over the friction, I think, is pretty interesting for such an early NES game. Mm -hmm. It's more dramatic than even the MSX version, because, look, the balls are still going. They are. Go they don't to stop. Go. go to go. Oh, 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 oh. God, it's, oh. Like, a, it's like a DVD screensaver. Oh, oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. God. I am King Pool, except I scratched, so it didn't count. <laughs> that shouldn't, that should have counted. Sorry. Well, fine. Fuck this game. What else did you release? Oh, Xanak. Okay. All right. I can see how you guys got a foothold over here. Uh, if you're going to bring over anything from M MSX, this is a good one. We've seen this before. We've covered this before. Several times this stream, in fact. But for being such an early NES shmup, this one actually plays really well. Not least of which because it's by Compile, and they actually cared about making a good port. And they hired Compile themselves to make this instead of, you know, Micronics. It's been a very Xanak intensive stream. Someday I should actually play all the way through this. I'm a big fan of Musha. Musha Pan. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What else they make? What, what else you got for us? Do? Mag Max, huh? What's Mag Max? Is it like Mighty Max? Mag Max is an ancient, crusty-ass Nichibutsu arcade game that for some reason they brought over to the, the NES in the US. I think this is just theory crafting. I think FCI got a foothold with Xanak, which was actually quite popular. And months later they thought, okay, we need more shmups. We gotta release more shmups. That's what the Americans want. Uh, unfortunately, a whole lot of the Famicom library... They were beaten to it by other companies that licensed games for release in the U.S., leaving them with limited options, including Nichibutsu. So if you want some of that shmup money, Nichibutsu, their old crusty ports start to look pretty good. Yeah, this seems a little, uh, 
A little dusty. Yeah, for 87, it's a little, uh... Lags a little bit behind the competition. Not terribly so, but still. So this is a game where eventually you build up a big robot man, and then you're the robot man. Sorry, I just want to hit this game with a feather duster. It's so nasty. Thank you, Chubo, for the 26-month resub. Smells like Mag Max in here. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Chubo. Always able to sniff out a Mad Max. A Mag Max, excuse me. Look, I'm a robot torso now. Oh, hey. And I can get legs. Look, I'm Mag Max. Oh, you look dumb. Sorry. <laughs> look, I'm a Nichi Butsu hero. This is the best I'm going to look. So to me, in retrospect at least, this looks like desperation. They're just trying to license whatever in hopes of getting more money from the US market, which at the time was kind of blown up. Thank you, Cinco Play, for the 100 bits. A poster for Mag Max came with that original EGM issue you went through. You haven't, I haven't framed my game. You have a framed Mag Max? Oh, That's fuck awesome. yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, what else are they releasing here in the US? Yeah. Well, there's more Nichibutsu. Ah, stinky. <laughs> Another. Another crusty old arcade shmup by the name of Saycross. I like the music in this, in this game a lot. I like Saycross a lot, actually. Yeah, this game's alright. It's just, you know, a little bit dated for when it came out. It, you know, got some old, like, you know, wood paneling and stuff, but it's still good. Yeah, it ages like a fine wine. Mm -hmm. Now, if they made an NES port of Nichibutsu's Dacholer, that would have made millions upon that millions. That is amazing. We still have Dutroller fever in our Discord, by the way. <laughs> Everyone loves that ostrich. In arcades, this had a pretty nice-looking 3D effect where there was a whole lot of parallax going on, but that's completely lost on NES. I shot a dinosaur skeleton, and a guy came out. And I'm running out of gas, I guess. I'm not very good at Saycross, and I don't really want to be. It's okay, though. Oh yeah, fun. this those those little symbols are your your gas. Oh. You'll see it now in case you want to play this. Oh okay. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. All right, you got to do better than Nichi Butsu for your next game. Okay, what's an oh? So here we are. It's finally come to this. We're playing Doctor Chaos here on the Retro Pile stream. So many people were suckered in by this because of the incredibly cool box art. Go look it up if you haven't seen it. It's it's really good. It suggests a much better game than what this actually is. I'm trying to make this game seem sick. Yeah, this intro is great looking. Got a guy with a knife. Ah, oh, help! Dr. Chaos is trying to kill me! Hey, hey, I'm Dr. Chaos. I was gonna say, his name's Dr. Chaos. I wouldn't, you know. Ooh... Oh, developed by the same team that did the Milo and Otis game. Oh, good. Marionette, huh? You stabbed a rat. So this is a game about stabbing rats and bats. Okay. Look how many doors we have to choose from. This is one of those games where you just go through infinite doors and they lead nowhere and you're just bored and lost and you go insane. And then when you go in the door, it turns into fucking Goonies too for some reason. Thank you, Carmen, for the 100 bits. Dr. Chaos, Chaos Control, listen. There's Shadow's gun. How do I choose new menu option? Open. There we go. We have to get gun. Got it. Then open door. And then go door. No, no way. way. All right. Go, uh, go out. Go left. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't have much patience for this game. I'm sorry. All right, I'm looking at the Dr. Chaos cover, and I'll tell you what I think. Sick! Isn't that amazing? Wow. That is a great piece of art. With the blood? Mm-hmm. Oh, so that whole segment was just me spinning in place. Did that rat take my knife? No, wait, I just switched away from it. No, I took it. Damn rat. <sighs> I just love that the game starts off making you think that this is going to be an exciting action game. Then immediately it turns into Goonies too. Another showcase we could do is games platformers specifically that inexplicably had first-person dungeon segments. There were so many of those on NES. Even shit like Golgo 13. Oh, 
Oh yeah, and there's a hit command, so it's gonna be like Goonies, and you have to randomly hit things a bunch. You're not even playing as Dr. Chaos in it, you're playing as his brother, Michael Chaos? <laughs> Michael Chaos? Michael Chaos. There's worse games on NES, but also there's there's way better. If you like games that are a giant maze and make no sense at all, and are kind of jank and strange, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> I like them too. Gun. Except for this one. Not so much a not so much a Doctor Chaos fan after all these years. Maybe this game has kind of a Fester's Quest appeal, where you have to really get into it. You have to be a super gamer. Hmm. I'm sorry you don't have the super gamer uh, brain. I gotta have that super gamer brain. Well, we're not gonna get far with Dr. Chaos, and you might not either, but maybe check it out if it looks good. Yeah. <clears throat> All right! Well, well... They had to bring Hydelight into this. t and &E Soft had no ties to Pony Canyon, far as I know, but Pony Canyon had the desire to release literally anything in the U.S., and what was left after everyone else picked everything over? Hydelide. Hydelide. Specifically the janked up Famicom version of Hydelide. Uh, the computer version came out many years before this. I think it was 84. And while it was popular, um, let's just say NES fans had better expectations. <laughs> Not to say this game isn't amazing. I love a Hydelide. You do. I'm more of a fan of virtual hide light. You know yeah. me. I wonder if I could get away with an entire playthrough of this on stream. It takes a while. Because <laughs> you have to level so much. I think you should. Oh, you died. Oh, yeah, your health goes down in the woods. You can just die for no reason. Well, that's hide light. Hi, light. So we're going to take a very quick look at what was Pony Canyon's bread and butter for a time, the Ultima ports. These games did huge business for them. Uh, the PC-88 ports of Ultima 4 through 6 were so big that after they made those, they decided to go back and make PC-88 ports of 1 through 3 as well. That's how big the market was. Damn. And then they decided to bring these over to the NES, and this version specifically is just very strange. Who has experience with this? Who can tell me about this game? Any Ultima freaks in the chat? Handmade. Ready made. You got Ultima 3 fans for Ultima 3 on the NES. Now one thing I like about this game is they added these uh, anime style character portraits. Mm -hmm. oh, That's I what the these. wizards look like. The... <laughs> we can play as a, a fuzzy wizard. <laughs> That's a race. Okay. Also fighters and barbarians. This is B. Hi B. Hi K. Hi D. F. Hi F. There he is, Lord British himself. Oh, that's him. This was the first Ultima game to hit the NES. Uh, Pony Canyon would later port. Uh, I think it was four and five, maybe also six. I'm doing my best to represent this series the best that I know. I have no experience with Ultima. I do have experience with this NES port. Because way back when, you could buy used NES cartridges from Funko Land. I got this game for like 79 cents. Mm -hmm. And someone had played this game a whole lot more than I ever will. Because it had like this super powered party full of characters who were just like ridiculously strong. But they were right at the beginning of the game, so I could experience the whole game just as, like, these incredibly broken characters. Okay, that rules. And what I found out... ...is that you could fight the town's guards! <laughs> and the, the characters in the cartridge that I played were so powerful, they beat the town's guards. And the game really doesn't like that. If you're able to beat these guys, it just keeps spawning them infinitely. It's like, uh, when the police get mad at you in Morrowind or something. Of course, here, I'm not going to be able to make a dent, but this seemed pretty interesting to me as an NES game where you can fight the guards in an RPG town. That's kind of wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, fuck you guys. I'm going to take over this town. It's just this game lets you if you're powerful enough. So I like that. Um, otherwise, don't know shit about Ultima. Sorry. You 
don't need to know shit about Ultima. I don't. Do I? Should I? Maybe someday. Let's play another game FCI released in the US. Good news, it's licensed by Nintendo of America. Is that good? Clong. Clong. Oh, it's, shit. Uh, oh, no. It's one of these guys. Uh-oh, the thing came off. You can't have the thing can't come off. That's how you get hopping vampires. It is. This game is based on the incredible, incredible movie, Mr. Vampire. No shit. The game, not nearly as good, but oh my god, that movie is crazy. You I've need, never seen it. You need to see Mr. Vampire. It's so funny. Just a whole lot of, like, it's one of those comedy kung fu movies where, like, everything is ridiculous and over the top. Oh, good. And it's very cartoony. Strange adaptation. Uh... Also, strange choice to bring over to the U.S. Yeah, why would you bring a, a port of a game that... Uh, based on a movie it's that just, didn't come out here? I imagine it's just pure desperation. <laughs> this whole library reeks of desperation. <laughs> a lot of companies, Capcom, Konami, have these huge libraries that are well-remembered, but FCI wanted to get in on a market that had already pretty much been capitalized upon by other publishers leaving him with Nichibutsu games and games based on Mr. Vampire. I did it. You did it! You know, the Americans are hungry for games about Chinese hopping vampires. It's true, we are. I accept your ancient scroll. What a weird choice. What a weird freaking library. <laughs> Look at the guy peeking in. <laughs> hey, boss! That's pretty good. I like that. Just a few more games left here in uh, their U.S. library. Believe it or not, this came out in 1990. They were pretty late to the party, as mm -hmm. you might be able to tell. But they did have some licenses up their sleeves, including the most unlikely team-up of all time. No WCW. <laughs> okay. The Pony Canyon game, produced in collaboration with Nichibutsu. Let's fucking go. Okay, I want to see what characters they have in this. What a what a freaking collab. Ric Flair, okay. Can you imagine all this star power? WCW and Nichibutsu and Pony Canyon. And Nature Boy Ric Flair. Okay, who else? Uh-huh. That sting. He's still wrestling. Really? Yeah. Man, I hate to have an NES game and still be wrestling. That's like <laughs> that's like 30 years later. <laughs> Let me rest. Lex L Luger. Luger, okay. He is the total package. Nichibutsu, not known for their wrestling games? I'm not sure what they are known for, but it's not wrestling games. Is that Mike Rotunda? They put Mike Rotunda in a goddamn... Mike Rotunda in an NES game from Pony Canyon. Alex is losing his fucking mind. I am. I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck to think. Well, whatever. What, whatever. You gotta have the Road Warriors in there, too. Alright, I'm so shocked I gotta leave the room for a second. Be right back. Okay. I am just... I'll give you a second to process this. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> We got the other road warrior, the animal. Alex will be back, don't worry. Hey, my specialty is the power slam, too. Slamming back energy drinks. Oh, I wouldn't make a very good wrestler. Steve Dr. Death Williams is in this. Who can tell me anything about Dr. Death? Not uh, Kevorkian, this guy. Steve, Dr. Death Williams. The Games Master, Kevin Sullivan. Who is this? Is he related to Games Master, the UK kids show? 
Oh, he's the game's master, I see. Of course, we got Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. There's a lot of wrestlers in this. Okay, folks, I've recovered. Did I hear you say the Taskmaster? No, the game's master. <laughs> Okay. And the dog face gremlin! Yeah, Rick Steiner! That's what they called it. Yeah. It seems pretty mean. Yeah, it is. Oh, the belly to belly suplex, a classic. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is in this, as well as uh, some other guys. Hot stuff! Of Eddie Gilbert! This goes on, let's play the game. Yeah, I was gonna say! There's so many freaking wrestlers in this. They call him Kevin Sullivan the Games Master instead of the Taskmaster? Did they fuck up? Well, I don't know if they fucked up. Maybe legally they couldn't call him the Taskmaster. That's really They fun. probably couldn't because either DC or Marvel owns that. Oh my god. He's gonna be bulldog. I like the, the, the shading stubble on him. Very good. The graphics in this, not bad. Better than I expect from a Pony Canyon game. Oh, these kicks are good. Wrestler sprites, nice and big. They are, they're chunky boys. What's uh, the popular opinion on this game? I don't know much about no NES wrestling games. <laughs> I have no clue. I know pro wrestling is pretty well regarded. Not so sure about the other ones. All right, check and chat. Looks better than pro wrestling. It's all right. Now, to me, this represents an honest attempt at getting into the U.S. market. You're not just trying to license some Nichi Butsu bullshit or get some <laughs> literally five- or six-year-old action RPG nobody wants to play anymore, like Hyde Lied. You're trying. Uh, the, 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 the wrench! This is an original game based on a popular wrestling uh, promotion? Franchise? R promotion. Promotion. And it's exclusively for the U.S. They did it. They made it for us. They tried. And it didn't take, because they stopped releasing NES games almost immediately after this. <laughs> they made a couple of games for Game Boy, uh, and the years afterward, most of their NES games would be, like I said before, ports of Dungeons & Dragons computer games, and also uh, the freaking uh, Ultima games. They did make some attempts to win over the US market, though. This being one of them, and the next game being a game that they tried to bring over, but ultimately it didn't come to market. We do, however, have some preserved box art in the form of a vid, a vid pro card. Are you familiar with these, Alex? No. These are the cards they would show you at Toys R Us, and uh, you would take the card up to the counter and they'd give you the game. Okay, I know those cards, yeah. Oh, shit! I'm getting brain busted or some shit. Yeah, you're getting murdered. Oh, my, oh God. my God. I'm dead. One, two, three. <laughs> that sounded good. Okay. That sounded really good. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, the game that surely would have saved them. I, I'm not. Is the game by the name of Mike Ditka Football? Why don't you show the cover first? Oh yeah, sorry. There's the cover. Mike Ditka's Big Play Football. <laughs> so, you had these incredibly Japanese games released for the MSX. You had a series of Jackie Chan games. You had games from Compile. The face that they chose to save their American branch was Mike Ditka. A former uh, coach for the Bears, I think? The Bears, The yeah. Bears? Yeah, that makes sense. This game never came out, but we do have a recovered prototype that I'm going to show you in a second. But I want to show off this box art. Alex, why don't you read the back of the box? Sure. For this game that never came out. Big plays, big action, big fun. Hey, this is Ditka style football. Hard hitting and explosive. And you don't have to be a genius to play. Just pop in the cartridge and start scoring. I'm glad I don't have to be a genius Me to either. score. I hate being a genius. Hold on. There we go. All right. Uh, it's, let's see. Substitutions. QB stinking up the place. Sit him down. Yeah, quit stinking up the joint. Injuries. Keep some ice packs on hand. Ooh. Penalties. When the zebras throw flags, I throw clipboards. What? Halftime show. Enjoy the show while I chew out the team. <laughs> Why? What'd they do? Time out. Here's why I pa grab a fresh pack of gum. <laughs> what else we got? A uh, big play offense. Easy to run and pass, like Good. the pros. Mm -hmm. One to two players. Yeah. Beat a buddy or headbutt the computer. <laughs> headbutt the computer. And coin toss. Better to receive than to give. Mike? Hello? Can you put that on an NES box? Is that legal? 
here's where I grab a fresh pack of gum. Okay, well, <laughs> let's play football the Mike Ditka way with this unreleased prototype of Mike Ditka's big play football for NES. This is before they added the Mike Ditka branding and before they changed the title screen. Otherwise, this is uh, identical to what we would have played. Scrabble. Look at that big Pony Canyon logo. Nice and big. Bigger mm -hmm. than we would have ever seen on any other NES game. And Natsume. Natsume made this. So it's going to be good, even though I'm getting banned. I No, I got banned. You're okay, fine. Okay, good. Uh, here's the famous NFL bunny girl. This is kind of a strange game to bring over. Would they have replaced these in the uh, released version? They would replace the bunny girls with Mike Ditka's, and you're like, oh, okay, just oh regular Mike God. Ditka. No, Mike Ditka in a bunny suit. So this game has a coaching mode. Should we be the Denver Miles, the LA Arcs, the Washington DC Hogs, New York Subways, the Chicago Forces? Actually, we can't pick those. Can we be the, the, the DC Hogs? Let's be the DC Hogs. DC Hogs! DC Hog Life. I like him. <laughs> this is this game's a little uh, cartoonish for an NFL game. I guess this doesn't have the NFL license. Hogs, call it in the air. Hit. It's better to receive than to give. I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, this looks good. This has some good cutaway graphics in the vein of Ninja Gaiden or something. However, the game looks like this. <laughs> oh. John Madden football, this is not. Right in the middle of the Pony Canyon eyeball. Right in the middle of the foreboding eyeball. So I think they had a good idea here. They had a wrestling game. They had a football game. They were ready to capture the market, but I guess those games they localized didn't pay off like they were hoping. But what were they expecting? They were all like Nichibutsu games. Well, maybe they thought America would get Nichibutsu fever. Maybe. Didn't happen. This game didn't happen either. I wonder how this would have done if it did come out. There wasn't much in terms of uh, football games for NES. NES was more about baseball. Wow, look at those boys. It's a boy pile. It is a boy pile. I like the gremlin referee. Is he that is what a uh, freak. is that what Ditko was referring to when he said the flags thrown by the zebras? Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty wacky guy. Yeah, unfortunately, though, it was poised to take over the U.S. as it did on the MSX, was not to be for Pony Canyon. Wow, nice throw, asshole! Amazing. <laughs> All right, computer, do one last shotgun play. We're going to sweep. No, we're going to O-Pass. All right, do it. O-Pass. You didn't O-Pass! More like, oh, that's a pass. More like no pass. <laughs> Fuck. Mike Ditka's big play football maybe wouldn't have saved uh, Pony Canyon's U.S. presence in retrospect. But there's one game I want to showcase that really exemplifies all that they're about. Everything we've seen so far, it's all leading up to this. One of their kind of earlier, but also more notable Famicom games. Why don't we show the box art for this? Oh my god, that kicks ass! Attack! Animal Gakuen! Look at that box art. Look at the style. I love I, the alligators. I have not seen another Famicom box with that kind of art style. It just looks... it's so distinctive. It's so nice looking. I don't want to take this down. Do we have to play the game? We it's have to play the good. game. We have to see what the actual game is. Sorry to say. It looks like this. It's about football, guys. Alright, our final game of the evening. To sum up the entirety of the Pony Canyon Library, let us play some Attack Animal Gakuin. Hey, wait a minute! What? This is a completely original video game from uh, Pony Canyon. No other game like this. At least not uh, with a schoolgirl in it. Okay. 
This one, I think they should have brought this to the U.S. They should have brought this over instead of fucking Saycross. I agree. I'd be more inclined to play this than like Magmax or, God forbid, Dr. Chaos. Look at these enemy sprites. You're shooting like, like kangaroos too. and shit. So Alex, as we play a little bit of this, why don't you sum up your thoughts on Pony Canyon and anyone in chat who has thoughts on what they've seen, sum them up. Tell us what you think. What was your favorite part of the Pony and Canyon showcase and uh, what was your least favorite part? My favorite part was actually the MSX games. I genuinely thought they were all going to be like Micronic shit, but instead they put their ass into it. Yeah, that really makes me wonder about all the publishers on NES that have been completely written off, like all they produced was bullshit. What kind of stuff were they making for computer platforms in Japan? It was probably very different. I just gotta wonder what what other sides to these publishers exist? What what games remain to be discovered? And yeah, MSX was the big winner of tonight's stream. MSX1 or MSX2, you were gonna get a good game out of Pony Canyon. Excuse me. It's a freaking uh, the koala bear. Who's a gangster? He's shooting the shit out of you. Oh, he's mad. Bonk. Koalas are actually like this. I did it. You koalas really have guns? Yeah. Then why are they endangered? Uh, they never. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> they never practiced. They never okay. went to the firing range. I like the I like the cacti. And also they have no thumbs. That, that, do it. So I played through this last night. And uh, I figure why not show off some of the bosses. Okay. Oh my god. This is like level three or something. I like that guy. I don't know what this guy is. He's I used cheats demon. to get this far. So trying to actually play this is impossible. That's a neat guy. He's big. He's tough. These birds will get you. Koalas aren't endangered? Well, I don't know. I just assume every animal's endangered for the most part. It's also a big-ass turtle. Oh, that turtle! You can see this guy on the box art because he has a huge gaping chest wound. It's very disturbing, actually. That's not good. <laughs> and also, this level's underwater. You can see her in her uh, swimwear. She has a different outfit for every level. Oh, okay. Pretty interesting game. Kind of a throwaway game. Not too much to it, other than it being Space Harrier on Famicom. Back then, that may have been enough for you. I have higher standards, thank you. I like the sunglasses. Yeah, the sunglass wearing <laughs> spider. This game also had support for the 3D Famicom goggles, which uh, were only supported by a few games, and then instantly discontinued. And you know what? Let's go ahead and show off the ending, too. Okay. Final boss is this. Don't like it. And then when you kill all his uh, minions, he dies. And that's Attack Animal Gakuen. And in the end, you were trying to save your girlfriend, who was just kind of laying out there in a place. Oh, hey! Oh. We did it! The animals have been attacked! Yeah, that score was legitimately earned. Happy end! Bam! Shoot you. She shot us! <laughs> Noko win! She, she saved, saved her. her friend. Aww. And this fight is over. She seems a little displeased every time uh, Noko fires her gun. <laughs> See you again next time. Thank you, you gotta be just firing off. Into the distance at nothing. Can't we just be a normal couple? I guess not. That's a happy end for Attack yes. Animal Gakuen, and that's a happy end for this week's Retro Pal stream. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We're done. That's it. We showed off a good portion of uh, Pony Canyon's library for MSX and NES. The clear winner was MSX. MSX owner owners got by far the better end of the deal. <laughs> Over here on the NES, we got uh, Dr. Chaos. Mm -hmm. I guess we wouldn't have gotten Hydelight if not for them. Gotta think about that as Hydelight freaks. Uh, Mike Ditka almost had a game. Mm -hmm. Boy, we <laughs> Pony Canyon dropped the ball over here. 
Not sure what the deal is, but uh, that is the Pony Canyon story. Love it or leave it. I'm leaving it. We're done. <laughs> I forgot thanks. about Scooter. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, and thanks to Scooter, oh, who I Scooter. hope uh, who I hope eventually accepts his life as a uh, robot in a maze game. <laughs> Sorry, Scooter. Special thanks to our patrons for making this week's stream happen. Thank it's you. because of them and how they voted that you saw Pony Canyon games this week instead of pack-in video games, which are going to happen in the future. That's a promise. But that's how they voted, and I think y'all made the right choice. That was a pretty interesting story in retrospect. Pony Canyon's uh, dual identity on MSX and NES. Glad we got to never, explore it. I would have never known that they had any talent. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't know unless you actually dove deep into their library. If you want to vote for what we play during our Wednesday showcase streams, head to patreon.com slash retropals. If you're in at the $5 tier, you get to vote on what we play. You get to demand what we play. You get to make your demands heard mm -hmm. and uh, listen to. We do listen to demands and we give in to them. We cave really easily. Oh, we really do. Alex, why don't you wrap us up? I'm going to look for a raid, a raid target. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPals. We post full-length highlights of our streams there. Our latest one is a look at the SNES mouse peripheral. That one is really, really good. It's got uh, uh, it's got Mario the Early Years in it, which is one of my favorite games because it's all very horrible versions of your favorite Mario. Mario characters as you've never seen them before, looking horrible. So I do like that one. We have a Discord as well. Let me just drop that link in the chat. Uh, you can join us there to discuss the stream, uh, request game, uh, request like you know, games you'd like to see us play, ask questions, and of course you can post your cats. We've been getting so many good cat pics lately. Did you see the video of Mort? There's a Mort video. Well, it was a few days ago. I saw was... him with a big puffy tail. Yeah, it was really good. There's a lot of good, uh, a lot of good cats, a lot of good, a lot of good black cats, orange cats, dogs. All kinds of cats. All animals. All kinds of animals. Mm -hmm. Join us, won't you? All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is an important raid. We okay. have to do this. We're raiding Rachel Retro, who is teaming up with Liz Star to play Sega Saturn games. Right now, Mr. Bones is happening as okay. we speak. So please enjoy Mr. Bones, as well as Rachel and Liz. Have a good rest of your evening, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks. <laughs>